obviously Brett Favre is a big part of that equation as always. But I think the real key in this ball game is going to be the running of Amon Green and how well that group does up front in order to keep the pass rush off of Brett Favre. And Chris, that's obviously going to be a tough task running the football against oh, these guys. Oh yeah, against this defense. But let's take a little look at the big picture for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's rarefied air for them. They have never this late in the season been tied for the best record in football. And yet all you hear about with this team is what they can't do. Their offense isn't living up to expectations. They can't run the football. Their offensive line isn't any good. And yet if they come in here today against the Green Bay Packers and Brett Favre and knock off this football team, all that starts to go away because then they become the favorite for Super Bowl 37. Well, let me hear you say it then, mister. I want to hear you say that the Buccaneers can run the football. The Buccaneers can run the football. Maybe not against this team, but they can oh, run the football. Weak. Let's ask our sprint virtual coach question. It is this. Come on, Warren, get out of the way. Which team will be hurt most by their quarterback change? Vote now using PCS Vision from Sprint or log on to FoxSports.com. You think this place is ready? Raymond James Stadium. They've been playing in here since 1998. And in the regular season, there hasn't been a game that's meant as much as this one. Their old rival, the Green Bay Packers, are in town. And it could very well be a heavyweight fight today on Fox. Talking watches now only at Burger King. Just two thirty-nine each with the purchase of any value meal. Cool your jets, man. Mmm, burger. Collect all four. And our big double cheeseburger is just ninety-nine cents, with two slices of melted cheese and two juicy flame-broiled patties. It's more than a quarter pound of beef. Hurry, offers end soon. You wanna go? You wanna go, little man? Ah, huh, what do you then? Well, dance, little man, dance. You wanna go? You want to go? Well, you're the tackling dummy. Dummy. Am I stuttering? I'm asking one more time. Do you want to go? Mama can't help you now. It's big boy school. Recess is over. Ray Lewis has his game on. Do you? Madden NFL 2003. If it's in the game? EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. When Bernie gets food poisoning, you won't believe his hallucinations. A special Thanksgiving Bernie Mac. Oh, Lord, you're killing me. All new at 8, 7 Central, Fox Wednesday. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. The Azure Play of the Week is brought to you by Microsoft, providing software to help businesses be more agile. In Week 11 against the Saints, Falcons quarterback Michael Vick used both his speed and agility on a scintillating seven-yard touchdown run. He's trying to make the turn, trying to get into the end zone, leaping into the end zone, touchdown! Vic outran number 29, Sammy Knight, and number 54, Darren Smith, before diving into the end zone for the spectacular score. Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. Oh. With Microsoft Server Software, you can quickly connect all aspects of your business. That software for the agile business from Microsoft. They are revved up in Tampa, Florida. Eight and two meet eight and two. Bitter rivals from their days in the NFC Central. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Okay, John Lynch, Brett Favre tends to be pretty dangerous after a bad game. What are the keys to disrupting him today? Uh, the keys to stop the run, first of all. We're focused on stopping Amon Green, forcing Brett into a passing situation. We feel like we can get pressure. You always know when you play Brett because of his confidence in getting the ball in there, you're going to have your opportunities. we got to catch him when he throws them to us. Balance of power in the NFC rests on the outcome of this game? Absolutely. Two best records in the league, and uh, we feel we feel like we can call ourselves the best team in the league at this point if we win, and we're ready to try to accomplish that. All right. Thanks, John. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Let's go back upstairs to 
Joe. All right, Pam, thanks. The Buccaneers are tired of hearing about their weak schedule and the fact that they've defeated only one team with a winning record. And Martin Gramatica will kick it to Javon Walker and will get an early look at the best defense in the NFL, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the best quarterback in the NFL, Brett Favre. Glad you're with us on Fox, Javon Walker, from just inside the goal line. Nice return out to the 26. And already a game break from James Brown back in Los Angeles. Hey, Joe, for those who were watching this contest between Detroit and Chicago, Paul Edinger bangs home this 22-yard field goal for the Bears to tie it up at 17. And they are heading to overtime, the second overtime between these two squads this season. Back to Joe, Troy, and Chris. JB, thanks. They mark Walker out of the 27. That's where Green Bay starts with it. Over the middle, Amon Green falls forward and got it up for a first down. You look at the numbers for Brett Favre in Tampa. Tampa Stadium, not bad. At Raymond James Stadium, winless. Four touchdowns, five picks. In fact, overall, he hasn't played well against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers his last five tries. He's two and three with three touchdowns and nine interceptions. Got two. Well, who else is on the offense for Green Bay outside of Brett Favre? Look at Marco Rivera getting the start despite a tear. An MCL in his right knee. They'd rather have Marco Rivera at less than 100% go against Warren Sapp than moving Flanagan over and having Frank Winters in at center. Second and eight. Looking for a reverse. Donald Driver blocking in front of him. First down, Tampa Bay territory inside the 45. 16-yard run by Donald Driver, brought down eventually by John Lynch. The one thing when you play against this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, they are so fast, you want to get them moving one way and reverse back the other way. Already in this game, the first run was a counter run. Then they come back with the reverse. They're trying to slow down the speed of the Buccaneers. From the 44, first down. Over the middle, wide open. Bubba Franks, the tight end. He got eight. Defensively for Tampa Bay. Up front, Simeon Rice having a tremendous year. At the right defensive end position, he has nine and a half sacks. Of course, Warren Sapp, who's the focus in these matchups, with Brett Favre. The linebackers are fast and they ask a lot out of Derek Brooks to cover the spot that Favre has hit here early, the middle part of the field against this cover two defense and there's the secondary. Second down and two. Tampa Bay rushes only four and it's incomplete. Driver the intended receiver, third down coming up. Joe, you mentioned that spot over the ball where they'd like to get the football against this cover two defense that Tampa Bay likes to run so much. You saw when they got the ball to Amon Green, they come back two plays later and work Bubba Franks in there in the center. Brett Favre told us last night he needed to be patient so far in this drive. He's shown that. Play action. Down the middle, nothing there. No flags as Terry Glenn ended up trying to hurdle Rondé Barber, who's playing with screws inserted into his broken left thumb and an early punch for Green Bay. But it was a pretty nice job on that drive by the Packers offensive line. That time John Lynch coming on the blitz out of the safety position, and we've seen the wall be solid for Brett Favre. 
Tampa Bay, for the most part, keeps their regular defense out there, with the exception being Carl Williams, who waits back at the 10 for this Bidwell punt. And movement up front, which really isn't that big of a deal. Crossing snap, false start on the center, number 60. Still fourth down. It just gives Bidwell a little more room with which to work. Well, that's exactly right. I'm a little surprised that right there, Tampa Bay does not decline that penalty. As you mentioned, Joe, it just gives him more room to try to down this ball inside the 20-yard line. But having a little extra space, and now fourth and seven gives Tampa Bay a chance to get maybe a jump on the snap where five yards would cost him a first down on fourth and two. High-hanging punts into the end zone. Bidwell does that for the fourth time this season. And we'll stay right here as the Tampa Bay offense heads to work. Can you believe that the best quarterback rating across the NFL during the month of November belongs to Brad Johnson? Seven touchdowns, no interceptions, and a 122.2 quarterback rating. I don't know if you know this or not, Joe, but I predicted that going into yeah, November. I read that. Well, I think one of the big things to mention on that is that this is a team that has not run the football well, so Brad has had to be carrying the load the last two weeks offensively. His own head coach, John Gruden, described him as comatose. He's hard to get excited. He has to be excited about today's opportunity. First down, Tampa Bay. It's not there on the left side, so back across the middle is tight end Dilger, a gain of five. The rest of the offense up front, and this is a much maligned offensive line. They're hoping to get something on a consistent basis out of Kenyatta Walker, who's at right tackle. A no-huddle approach for Tampa Bay here at the start. Michael Pittman is the deep back. As Johnson's going to put it up, throws McCardell. First down, Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay is going to go to some no huddle in today's ball game. And one of the reasons that they want to do that is they want to keep Gilbert Brown, that run stuffing defensive front, in the ball game. They don't want to give him a chance to make substitutions. And they're going to throw the football. They're not going to be as committed to running the ball as they have been the past couple of weeks. And I think the other point here is that Bonnie Holiday, who really has had no practices, no games because of a recent injury, is out there as well. So he could get a little worn down as well. Holiday and Baja Villamila switch sides on this first down play. And a toss to Pittman running left. Michael Pittman into Green Bay territory. Deshaun Johnson's going to come down here on the crackback. And Bonnie Holiday looks like he's struggling on that knee. To, from my standpoint, looks like they're going to be trying this left side an awful lot just to make sure that Bonnie Holiday really can go. Something's wrong with Brad Johnson. We saw him earlier prior to that play trying to dig something out of that right eye or maybe was hit in the right eye. So Rob Johnson is in a quarterback for the Buccaneers on first down. And he starts with a throw. Mike Allstock out of the backfield, lowers his head and gets to the 40. Hardy Nickerson made the stop. Earlier, Brad Johnson was poked in the eye on this play. And Rob Johnson's going to stay in the game for the moment as the left hand of Bonnie Holiday got up in the mask of Brad Johnson. And they very well could have called hand to the headgear right there. They're normally watching that pretty closely. Could have been called by the official. The throw to Allstock. Got eight. Second down and two. Now Michael Ryan left shot. First down. Marty Nickerson, longtime Tampa Bay Buccaneer with another tackle. Let's look at the defense for the Green Bay Packers. They are 17th overall in the NFL. Bonnie Holiday getting the start at defensive end. In fact, Aaron Campman is not active for this game. The linebackers, Nickerson, who played with the Buccaneers from 93 to 99 in the middle. Niall Diggs been banged up, but he's out there. And there's the secondary. Williams and McKenzie on the corners. Sharper and Marcus Anderson, the safeties. 
Bob Johnson changes it up at the line. Johnson more mobile than Brad Johnson, and he just gets rid of it to avoid a sack. And now a penalty flag comes in late. Rod Walker was pressuring Rob Johnson and will check the marker. And they're going to call intentional grounding. He was outside the pocket, but did the ball get back to the line of scrimmage? Well, I think that's the argument. Yeah, he was clearly outside the there tackle box. There was no traction on the play. The quarterback was out of the pocket. And as you can see, it was a good no call there, but that's one of the areas that Rob Johnson has struggled in. He has only had 40 passing attempts, counting the last two. He's got 42, but he's been sacked seven times, and that's twice as, twice as much compared to the number of attempts of Brad Johnson, and he's got to do a better job of avoiding sacks if he's going to continue to play throughout this ball game today. Second down and 10. On a slant, it's picked off. Niall digs on the deflection. Still on his feet and down at the Tampa Bay 45, and flags come in late. Off the arm of Keyshawn Johnson into the gut of Niall Diggs, and we'll check the marker. But it is Green Bay's ball. A couple of things to talk about here. Yeah, on the defense, ball. after the play was over, late hit, first down. Tyrone Williams, number 37, really didn't practice much at all this week with a hamstring injury, so the Buccaneers were going to test him early. Keyshawn Johnson told me on the field right before the ball game he was going to have to have his rib injury shot up. So you have the Bucs going after Tyrone Williams and paying the price for it here on this first one. And you wonder if the rib injury is bothering him. That was a ball that Keyshawn Johnson will normally make. The personal foul on the late hit brings the ball all the way to the 30, and it's Amon Green turning the right side. He got two. Shelton Quarles made the stop. Amon Green in this running game has not been very effective here in the last couple of weeks, and the Packers want to get the ball to Amon Green 28 times today, and that's not 28 touches. They want him to have 28 carries in this ball game, and if they're able to accomplish that, obviously, obviously it means they're having success, and they're in the ball game as far as the scoreboard goes. On second down, play action, Bubba Franks. First down, Green Bay. Brought down at the 17-yard line, a gain of 11. Derek Brooks made the stop. Well, it just makes it awfully difficult. Anytime you're running the football, Marco Rivera pulls out in front of this. It looks like their counter play going to the left side. And we've heard so much about the Buccaneers today really emphasizing trying to stop Amon Green before they worry about the passing game. But sometimes you can over pursue to the point where Brett Favre hurts. Amon Green again. He has been busy, Troy, and not much. Balls forward for one as Rondi Barber made the stop. You know, the thing that people talk about with Rondé Barber, the screws in his left thumb, how's he going to be able to pick off a pass? How about, how's he going to tackle today? Because in the cover two scheme, those corners have to come up and make big tackles, and that could affect him in that area. Well, there's no question, though. It seems like they're doing more and more tackling with the shoulder, but that is a big part of Rondé Barber's game. He's a very physical player out of the corner position, does a great job of tackling. Best red zone defense lines up, and Farr dumps it off to his fullback, Henderson, who's forced out of bounds right at the first down marker. That'll be a first down for Green Bay. Boy, Brett Favre just doesn't make many mistakes at all. Rondé Barber is going to come on the blitz right here, and Brett Favre sees it, dumps it right in the flat from where Rondé Barber came. Easy game. Brett Favre said... They're really a vanilla defense. And we have to run a vanilla offense against that vanilla defense. We can't outsmart ourselves. First and goal. Amon Green to the five. Green on the carry. I think when you look at what Tampa Bay is going to try to do, 
against the Packers. They want to get pressure on Brett Favre. There's no question about that. They want to be able to stop the run. If they're going to bring pressure, as we saw two plays earlier, they've got to be able to get to him because Brett is one of the best in the league at recognizing the blitzes and picking them apart. Second and goal. Corner of the end zone, driver. Touchdown. Ninth straight season with 20 or more touchdown passes. That second most all time. Dan Marino had 10. Well, if Donald Driver doesn't go to the Pro Bowl this year, there ought to be an investigation. I love the way he took his time setting that up. You're so wide as a wide receiver on that play. Oftentimes, you'll see guys go straight to the corner, and they run out of room. Donald Driver is playing like he's been in this league for 10 years. In fact, they're starting to talk contract extension with Driver. When he starts to look around the league at the money like Oz Hakeem got and others across the NFL, I think he's wise to say, hey, well, let's slow down a minute here and start looking at uh, some of the comparables <laughs> because there aren't many doing in the league what Donald Driver's doing. Well, there's no question about it. And I was talking to offensive coordinator Tom Rosley a few weeks back, and he said, one, he was disappointed that they didn't use Donald Driver more last season. And then also, he's a little concerned because his contract comes up and he knows he's going to demand a lot of money. But he has done everything that has been asked of him this season. There was a lot of discussion about when they went out and picked up Terry Glenn. Donald Driver has turned into that go-to guy that they thought Terry Glenn was going to be when they went out and signed him in free agency. Chris, you know those receivers used to drive far nuts. And they basically cleaned house and went with a new group. They stepped Driver up, gave him more of a role. They bring Terry Glenn in. They got rid of a couple of guys. Antonio Freeman. Bill Schrader. Bill Corey Schrader. Bradford. Charles Lee. I really think it's the biggest difference in the Green Bay Packers this year. Because of their ability on the outside now to beat bump and run coverage, something they couldn't do with their previous wide receiver group, they are now able to attack and not have to worry about teams coming up in that bump and run and stopping them. This is Aaron Stecker. Runs into Edwards and falls forward to the 30. And so the injury to the eye of Brad Johnson is serious enough to bring Rob Johnson back onto the field. And to be honest, John Gruden brought Rob Johnson in because he wanted him to be the quarterback. He's more mobile. He's a quarterback guru. He said, if, if anybody can make this guy quarterback, it's me. And that just hasn't happened. Well, there's no question that John Gruden likes the mobility of a quarterback, and that's why he like John Gruden in Oakland. Rob Johnson allows him to do some of those same things. From their own 29, Johnson throws, and Jurovicius makes the catch, gives a stiff arm. And they're going to mark the ball outside the 40 and give Tampa Bay a first down. Rob Johnson... Troy, just to follow up on your point a little bit, we saw him earlier this season against the Carolina Panthers, and yes, they do have a good pass rush, but seven sacks in that ball game, and you go back and you look at the numbers for Brad Johnson, he averages only one and a half sacks per game. So the major difference between these two quarterbacks is the ability in the pocket not to have the negative plays, and that's what Brad Johnson gives you that Rob Johnson hasn't throughout his career. Jurevich has fumbled the ball forward and after initially singling Signaling first down, they brought the ball back, and it's second down and one. All stuck. First down. Out to the 42, Mike McKenzie made the hit. And I think it was interesting, two games ago against Minnesota, Mike Allstott had 26 carries. And then last week against Carolina, all of a sudden he gets two carries. And it was exactly reversed for Michael Pittman. Last week, Michael Pittman was the one carrying the load and talked to Mike Allstott just prior to the game. He really had no idea how much he was going to be a part of this offense here today. But so far, he's been a real big part of it. Five-time pro bowler. Lines up in front of Pittman. And here's Rob Johnson in trouble. Chased from behind by Sharper. And forced out of bounds by Nickerson at the 45. Rob Johnson on the run. Brad Johnson had been taken in. They looked at his right eye and now back out onto the field. And we'll get a status report on Brad Johnson here momentarily. 
It's just so stark the difference between these two quarterbacks. Rob Johnson's always wanting to run around, try and keep the play alive, make something happen. Brad Johnson, one, two, three, sit in the pocket. That thing is out of there. He is not going to allow this offensive line to take the heat for giving up sacks. Second down and seven. Pittman. Just across the 49, a game of five. I've never heard a running back as criticized as Michael Pittman is for being too fast. Things happen too quickly for him, and he doesn't have any patience to let things open up in front of him. Yeah, you know, normally if you're talking about a runner, the criticisms are normally that they're not hitting the hole, they're not very tough when they run with the football, they're not very physical. Michael Pittman does all those things. When you watch the film, he's unbelievable. The coaches are critical of him because he hits it too fast and he doesn't give things time to develop. Third down and two. Set up for a quick throw and it's complete. That's Williams. And a spin move out of bounds at the 35. It's seven up in Green Bay here in Tampa. Let's go to Los Angeles and check in with JB on a game break. Hey, Joe, to show you how the Bears snapped their eight-game losing streak, this is Paul Edinger, who missed the field goal earlier, did boot one and tied up and sent it in OT. That's the game winner there. 2017 Bears again snapped their eight-game losing streak. Back to Joe, Troy, and Chris. A look at the standings in the NFC North. Green Bay, see Minnesota. They fall to the bottom now at three and eight. They lost today. Green Bay with a win today. Confirms their division. Pittman. That's what running hard and hitting that hole fast will get you, Aikman. Well, that's exactly right. I don't know how one can argue with this. You see him hitting it going downhill and getting in the hole. The hole's closed pretty quickly in this league. But you see Pittman, he's gonna hit and ricochet and he's got spin moves and he's just a tough fella to bring down. And Hardy Nickerson was right there in the hole, and Michael Pittman just made him miss. And that was one of the things that Gruden said that we had to start having. He said, it's not always going to be a hole. Sometimes you just have to make somebody miss, run over somebody, make a play yourself. That time Pittman did. Good second down and six. Let's off the corner, and Rob Johnson never saw McKenzie. Not even from the backside, and Mike McKenzie eats up Rob Johnson all the way back near the 40. Yeah, and one of the things that hurt that the most is that Keenan McCardell is going to come in motion and working in towards the tight end. You see McKenzie right here at 34. He gets then closer to the quarterback on the blitz. He comes off. Brad doesn't, excuse me, Rob Johnson doesn't have a chance to see it. He gets hit right in the face. Probably got a dreadlock upside the head, too. <laughs> A big sack, the ball all the way back near the 40. Rob Johnson buying time, but not enough. And Bajia Villamela. This crowd's already on Rob Johnson, who doesn't get rid of the football, and the sack brings it back just shy of the 45-yard line. Well, that's the thing we've been talking about over and over about Rob Johnson, and this is the criticism of him. Once you get outside the pocket, all you have to do is throw the football and get rid of it. There's nobody open right here. Throw it away. You don't then take a hit, and you don't lose yardage for your offense. Under a minute and a half to play, Tom Tupa. Out for his first one of the day. Gary and Gordon waiting deep, and this is ugly. But it takes a good Tampa Bay bounce. Down at the eight, a 36-yard punt. We'd like to welcome those of you watching other games. A minute nine left. Green Bay took the opening kickoff, got into Tampa Bay territory, but eventually had to punt. Then after Tampa Bay went back into Green Bay territory, a turnover, a deflection, an interception off the arm of Keyshawn Johnson into the gut of Niall Diggs. Diggs with a nice return, and the Green Bay Packers went down the field. And a hookup between Favre and Donald Driver made it 7-0. Brad Johnson, the starter for Tampa Bay, is out with an injury to his right eye. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have taken their first time out of the day, and they take it on defense. Favre's already smiling. He's not. So, how was Florida? Nice.
A lot of pretty girls on the beach. Yep. Probably wearing bikinis, huh? Oh, yeah. Pretty girls in bikinis. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by December 12th. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Fly it. Do you have to screwdriver too? I'm in. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Right at that. Pliers. Make it a blood light. There's a new kind of luxury. It's not just about what you own or what you've done, but about who you are. It respects your time and your priorities. It understands what's important to you. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. That might be the bridge over to Treasure Island. I don't know. You don't know. Troy, you don't know. Chris, you don't know. Here are the standings in the NFC South. Tampa Bay on top, and now Atlanta with their win today, and they just thrashed Carolina. And New Orleans, their loss today is they lost to Cleveland. Atlanta's made the climb all the way up into second place, and they're here in Tampa in two weeks. On first down, Amon Green. A two-yard gain to the 10. Guys, I think Sean King is going to come in the ballgame for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rob Johnson has a baseball hat on. Brad Johnson has a baseball hat on. The three quarterbacks just a couple of moments ago were huddled up, sort of going over some things. I really think it's Sean King's now. I think John Gruden's already seen enough of Rob Johnson. So have these fans. Me too. Don't laugh. Second down and eight. Blitz coming. Amon <laughs> Green runs right by it and gets a first down for Green Bay. Brooks was coming on a blitz and took himself out of the play as Green gets enough for a first down. Well, and you talk to Tampa Bay and how they wanted to stop Amon Green, and it's not so much because they don't think Brett Favre is such a key part of their success offensively, but they know if they're able to stop the running game, then they can put pressure on Brett with the pass rush, and so they've got to try to make him one-dimensional. So Green Bay is doing exactly that. Enough on the ground, and Favre doing his usual thing. Rob Johnson... Standing and talking, and I'm sure pleading his case in a way to John Gruden. It may be Sean King coming in. Seven nothing Packers after one. The NFL on Fox will continue after these messages. I need a car. No, a convertible, a red one with under 15,000 miles. Autotrader.com. With two million new or used cars, you can find the one you really want. And with millions of shoppers, you can sell the one you already have. It's the ultimate automotive classified site. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. You're watching the NFL on Fox. First Union is now Wachovia. Wachovia, an uncommon name an uncommon approach to banking. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. However you look at it, zero just got better. Get zero percent APR. Zero down payment. Zero payments for 90 days, plus get 1,000 bonus cash on 2003 Chevy Impala, Malibu, Venture, and Monte Carlo, or choose 3,000 total cash back. So roll out, stop by. See your Southern Chevy dealer today. First 
Union is now Wachovia. Wachovia, an uncommon name, an uncommon approach to banking. Jimmy Johnson sits down with Jerry Jones for the first time since leaving Big D. It's a Fox NFL special Thanksgiving Day. For the second time here early, Brad Johnson is leaving the field. Well, the Green Bay offense is on the field, and Amon Green looks for running room and doesn't find much. He's got three. And I think it's important to note, Joe, that if, in fact, John Keene comes into the game, he was inactive as the third quarterback in this game. And so what that means is that if he plays, Rob Johnson nor Brad Johnson can then go back into this game until the fourth quarter. So there's a lot at stake if you put Sean King in this game. He's got to stay healthy. You know what's interesting, though? I haven't seen Sean King throwing on the sideline. So maybe he's not coming up. Second down and seven. Ron Green gets to the 26. It'll bring up third down after a gain of three. Darby made the stop. So now Rob Johnson has taken off the cap, and he has his helmet back on. Well, it looks like they might have just had the rule explained to them and understand now that if Sean King were to play, Rob Johnson or Brad Johnson couldn't then play until the fourth quarter. Third down and four. Barr floats it out of the reach of Glenn. Fourth down. Shelton Porles made a nice play on that one, getting a hand on Terry Glenn coming across. Rondé Barber was definitely in a tough position trying to trail Terry Glenn, and Shelton Porles just gave him a little shiver to throw him off his route and then basically break that play up. Second punt for Josh Bidwell. Carl Williams waiting deep. Line drive punt. Chance for a return from Williams. Carl Williams gets to the 30. That's it. Todd McBride made the stop. Tampa Bay gets it. And Rob Johnson's coming back in to play quarterback. I'm stepping out with my baby. You can't go wrong, it's arm and right. It's for sure, not for maybe. That I'm the GMC Envoy has a hydroform steel frame. So if you're rattled, it's not us. Oh, that was easy. And I keep on knocking wood. The Citizen Echo Drive. It never needs a battery because light recharges it. So, what will you do with your battery now that your watch doesn't need one? Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis and his mom serve Garrett Hill Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle. Loaded with more wholesome chicken than before. Filled up right by a great bowl, Garrett went on to bowl great. Danny sets me up on this blind date with this girl, Angela, and I'm thinking she's a little shy. She gets up and starts stage. shaking it. Right in front of the table. So she says, take me to Vegas. Yeah. We're having the time of our lives. It's kind of getting yeah. hot, kind of getting dirty. She's got this sexy tattoo with a knife piercing a heart. Wait a minute. Angela? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's my sister. <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. That's not funny. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Miller Lite. Life is best told at a place called Miller Town. By Circuit City, we're with you. By GMC, we are professional grade. And by Duracell, trusted everywhere. Hope this isn't on in the studio. Jimmy Johnson will leave the show. This is what it looks like down here in Florida in November. A beautiful day in the 70s. Rob Johnson with a toss to Pittman. Turns it up. Nice head of steam and a gain of five yards. Hardy Nickerson the tackle. Early game headlines for week 12. Michael Vick 
another big day and Atlanta just dismantled took apart Carolina Stephen Davis and the Redskins on a late turnover with under 20 seconds remaining Kurt Warner stripped fumbled the Redskins took care of the rest the Redskins win today not a bad game for Danny Werfel by the way and Ricky Williams part of a Miami win 30 to 3 at home over San Diego second down and five a little play action from Rob Johnson and he'll run it won't reach the 43rd down coming up we should make the point that even Brad Johnson said to us that the most popular quarterback in this town is Sean King that the people and the fans and the radio talk shows they all want to see Sean King get the opportunity even above Brad Johnson so it is a bit of a quarterback controversy obviously Brad Johnson has quieted a lot of his critics with his play though the last couple of weeks that was Sean King led them to the NFC championship game as a rookie in 99 neither one of these other two quarterbacks have been able to do that third down and one and all Scott did not get the first down and Brad Johnson is at least back on the field we still have had no further word from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as to exactly what the injury is and there's our first up close and personal look at the snarling face of John Gruden. Yeah, and you can read John Gruden's lips. He was wanting him to throw the ball in the flat and that's one thing about John Gruden. It doesn't take long to look at him and know exactly what he's thinking or what he's saying to his players. Troy, you and I were giggling like school kids talking to Gruden in the meeting a couple days ago. He's a funny guy. You look at his you look at his demeanor and I think people would just expect him to be all out intense all the time but he's got another side that's well he's not showing the other side right now to Rob Johnson no he's not at all he's a very intense football coach he's very passionate about this sport passionate about this team and he's done a fabulous job in the short time that he's been here second chance for Tupac better punt Gordon with a fair catch and he takes it in at the 12. So the Packers get it back 1136 remaining in the first half and Brad Johnson getting loose again. If you think all batteries are the same consider this when monitoring a patient after open heart surgery the brand of battery hospitals trust most is Duracell. Duracell trusted everywhere. Still think all batteries are the same? Consider this. When IMAX needed power for their camera, they trusted Duracell. Up there or down here on Earth. Duracell trusted everywhere. I cannot believe this present. It's so cool. It, it's the best gift ever. That's basically the reaction I want from my whole family. We've got lots of gifts that'll do that. Let's start with the kids. Bring your list. With CDs, games, DVDs, and more, we've got the gifts electronics lovers will love. And tons for under $50. Circuit City, we're with you. Wow, great gift. Exactly. <laughs> Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do what, 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 do what. Thanks for saving the spot, boys. A defiant teacher puts his job on the line. I want that thing out of my school. What if I don't acquiesce? Try me! And a rebellious student from the King family are racist. Could put the faculty in jeopardy. I don't believe you feel this way. Hold on! Get your hands off of her! An all-new Boston Public, 87 Central, Fox Monday. Well, you can see they put a protective shield in the face mask of Brad Johnson, a clear shield. Sometimes you see one that's shaded to protect the eye. Green Bay leading seven to nothing, starting with it at their own 13. Barb in trouble, dumps it off out of the reach of Amon Green. 
Chris, we saw that uh, injury to Brad Johnson, the right eye for the Tampa Bay quarterback. We've seen him leave the field twice, and I thought you brought up an interesting point about going to Sean King. Maybe they didn't because this guy could come back. Yeah, that's exactly right, because had they gone to Sean King, then you couldn't go back to Brad Johnson. I think it would have been a tougher decision if it were between Rob Johnson and Sean King. You've already made your feelings. I know. I overdid that. Yeah, but that's all right. That's the way I feel, though. Don't coil back. Uh -oh. Second down and ten. Far set for the first time today. Darby. Well, you're going to see right here, there's pressure all across the board. Warren Sapp working up in there. you got Charger Darby. And the whole front was able to push their guy back into Brett Favre's lap. Brett had nothing to do with the football right there. And I think you hit on the point. Simeon Rice is so good at coming around the corner, it forces Brett Favre to step up. And that's when you get Sharker Darby and, of course, Warren Sapp with the push up the middle. This crowd knows what to do. And the Packers want it. Well short of a first down. Singleton made the stop. And it's time for Green Bay to punch. Gain of 11 on the play. And Brad Johnson it looks like is coming back in. And it also looks like they took the shield off his face mask. Yeah, they have taken the shield off. And, and it's something that's going to be a distraction for Brad Johnson playing with that, having not used it just this week in practice. So he will not use it when he goes into this game now. Good punt by Bidwell. Williams back at the 31. Going to throw back across the field. That's Jackson. Dexter Jackson in trouble and brought down from behind. What a play by Torrance Marshall. A loss of six on the return. This stuff happens a little north of here in Nashville. <laughs> We're too far south. A loss of six. Tampa Bay has it down seven. Wow, an HP digital camera. Wow, an HP all-in-one printer. Wow, an Office Depot person who will be there if I have any questions. Office Depot has all the latest technology, like easy-to-use HP digital imaging products for long-lasting film-quality digital pictures. And Office Depot has the people to demonstrate how everything works. All at Office Depot's everyday low prices that are sure to please every family. Office Depot, what you need, what you need to know. Wow, I don't know when a trip to the big game with John Elway. <laughs> Enter to win a trip to the big game with John Elway. Odds of winning dependent on number of entries. Odds of becoming John Elway's best friend, not as good. Convention. Bad sign for Favre in the pack when the back of Brett's jersey is dirty. As Tampa Bay gets it, they'll start with it at their own 25. Down by seven. And Brad Johnson back in at quarterback. Pittman. Lost yardage. Loss of one. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Pam Oliver. All right, uh, Joe. Brad Johnson back on the field there. He went to the locker room a couple of times. They wanted to make sure that right eye was okay. The problem was his vision did not return in that eye for a very long time. It remained blurry, but it's cleared up to the point now where he can return to the game. Back to you. You would think, guys, it's 
Brad Johnson getting scratched on the eyes. That ever happened to either one of you two? Well, it has, and it's very difficult because it burns when the sweat goes into your eye, and then it, it continues to water. And it's just very difficult then to be able to see out of that eye. That's why he's missed time. That's McCardell. Minimal gain, third and long coming up. A gain of five. And third down facing Tampa Bay. Don't forget, Thursday, start your Thanksgiving day with an NFL tradition, beginning with America's number one pregame show. J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy get you ready for kickoff. Then it's a Fox NFL special as LeVar Arrington and the Redskins. They won today. They beat the Rams. Take on Emmett Smith and the Cowboys in a showdown between NFC East rivals. Coverage begins Thanksgiving Day, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on Fox. Third down and six. Packers come on a blitz. Johnson steps up and fires. Incomplete off the hands of Johnson. Not a very good start today for Keyshawn Johnson. The drop on the interception, the drop on third down now, and maybe you give him the benefit of the doubt because he did get those ribs shot up before the game, but here's a guy that clearly wants the football in clutch situations. He's had two tries and missed them both. So another punt for Tom Tupa. It'll be his third of this first half, and the offense for Tampa is doing nothing. Penalty flags fly as a line drive punt. They'll head out of bounds, and we'll see where they will mark it. Still walking, still walking, still walking. Green Bay will have it outside their own 30 when we return. good to be true. This can't be legal. A big and tasty for just one dollar. The McDonald's dollar menu. Lots of choices. One dollar each every day, including sandwiches like the tender big and tasty or juicy McChicken. Turn your dollar into something tasty. Paul Vitti is leaving his crime family for the Sobel family. That restaurant was really good. Go! Up until the attempted whacking. Robert De Niro, Billy Crystal, analyze that. Rated R. Starts Friday, December 6th. Yeah, where'd you go last night? Where did you go? Nowhere. Is the season for giving a diamond engagement ring why do i have to wear the stupid helmet because you're stupid and eric's giving donna the gift of a lifetime don't miss an unforgettable that 70s show a new hour at eight fox tuesday this is what it looks like in troy aikman's basement with a direct line to every offensive coordinator and head coach across the NFL. And the phones have been ringing just like that, too. Do you have anything yeah, to report this no. week there, Mr. Popular? Come on, what's uh, the latest scoop, baby? Lately, huh? <laughs> Be careful, he'll never leave. First down and 10. Green Bay with the lead. High throw, but caught by Bubba Franks after the 40. Derek Brooks brought him down. You know, John Gruden sort of started his career in Green Bay as a receivers coach up there, and he pretty well emphasized the point that a big reason why so many guys off of that staff went on to have major NFL head coaching jobs, guys like Dick Duran and Andy Reid and Marty Morningwig and Steve Mariucci, is because of that guy right there, number four. And we saw Tampa Bay go to the no huddle situation right now. It looks like Green Bay is going to it as well, taking their time and making the call on the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. Airing it out. Donald Driver. Great adjustment to the ball, but incomplete. 
Dwight Smith for the cover. And I'll say this, Troy, about the no huddle, and I've played a lot of this no huddle offense, the sugar offense, all the different things under Sam White in Cincinnati. I always argued against using that sugar huddle on the road because the one thing that it does is really draw the crowd back into the game, and Donald Driver almost coming up with another huge play on that one. Yeah, I think it's all about matchups, and that's why they're doing it here. They had Donald Driver working against Dwight Smith. Dwight Smith has been bent, beat numerous times this season on the deep ball. That's the first shot they take coming off of that no huddle. Be interesting to see what they try to do here on third down. Barb is flush. Glenn over his head. Glenn had three Tampa Bay defenders around him. And even Brett Barb can't get the ball in the arms of Glenn with that kind of coverage. Rather confused looks on the faces of those Green Bay offensive players like, what were we just doing? Yeah, I'm surprised. I really am because I think their best shot against Tampa Bay is to run the football with them on green and do the play action like they were doing earlier. I don't know why they did that one. Bidwell with a good punt. Carl Williams from inside the 15. Penalty flag on the play. And Williams goes nowhere. And again, it's Torrance Marshall, a high draft pick. At least making his presence felt on special teams. They've moved this guy from outside linebacker to fullback, back to the middle linebacker position, and he's made two good plays in the last two Bidwell punts. Uh, he's apparently settled in now as a linebacker. You mentioned he was backing up at fullback. He changed his number from 51 to 41. Now he's back wearing the number he's accustomed to at 51, and coach has told us that he's going to be staying at linebacker now. And should Nile Diggs' knee not hold up today, he would holding, be Holding, number 20 of the receiving team, will penalize from the spot of the catch. You know, it's kind of neat that you know, a guy with just one good hand left can still hold that well. Good job. He got Ferguson with that good right hand. And we will take a break. Get that music going again. 7-0 Green Bay. Platoon, Wall Street, Hot Shots. Somebody loves Charlie Sheen. Oh. Can I run a check for these? Can I see some ID? I'm going to have to call the bank. Is this going to take long? Yes. How's it going? This doesn't look like you. You did when I came in here. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. How's it going? The guys are counting on me. Gotta go. Just one night. Just one night. Nice pants. Nice pants. Nice pants. Hi. Nice pants. Where have they been? Presenting Dockers Go Khaki with Stain Defender. See? Dublin, Ohio, a town divided between Wendy's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger and Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. Well, there's common ground here. Don't we all love Swiss? Yes. And who here doesn't enjoy hickory smoked bacon? Some like it on a whole breast filet and some on a cheeseburger. But are we going to let that tear us apart? Yeah. Choose Wendy's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger or Chicken Bacon Swiss. It's better here. And now phone home. E.T. Collectibles have landed in every Wendy's kids meal. So far, it's been Green Bay's defense stealing the thunder from that great Tampa Bay defense. Hi, uh, longtime listener, first-time caller. Listen, I'm not going to talk about the Super Bowl with the Buccaneers until our offense gets going. How many times will that phone call be made later today if the Buccaneer offense does more of this? Lenius Hunt came across too soon. Was he drawn off? So look at that Green Bay defense and some of the highlights from today. The tip, the pick, first of the year for Niall Diggs. Good return, which set up the touchdown. The sack by McKenzie. And then Kabir Bajah Biamila with his 10th sack.
the first Packer defender to have double digit sack season since Reggie White did it in 97 and 98. And I do think that a defense coming in that's going to be playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they hear so much about how good Tampa's defense is that they really get geared up coming in and wanting to let everybody know that they're also a talented team and play good ball. First down and 13. Penalty was against Tampa Bay in a short throw. Jerovicius tries to tiptoe down the sideline. Marcus Anderson forced him out after a game of nine on the play. Yeah, you see Joe Jurevicius there, and he's a guy who hasn't really got to play all that much. He's been limited a little bit because of injury. He came back last week, but he hasn't gotten to play primarily because he's the third receiver, and they've not been able to use a lot of their third down package because it's not what's best for their pass protection. They're better off with two backs in the backfield, a tight end, and that helps protection on Brad Johnson. But as a result, Joe doesn't get on the field as often as what they'd like to have him out there. It's second down and four. Brad Johnson, nowhere to go. So he falls forward and picks up the first down. In the arms of Gilbert Brown, but not before Tampa Bay picks up the first first down of this second quarter. Nina McCardell coming across the field here on this one. I'm a little surprised by McCardell's reaction. He sort of stopped and was looking for a hole and then ran right back into Mike McKenzie. But there you see some of the the fight and the spirit that has made Brad Johnson the man around here. We saw Rob Johnson play in the game against Carolina. You watch Rob Johnson. This is just a different football team when he's in there at the quarterback position. It's a first down for the Buccaneers. Setting up a screen and Stecker is dumped by Gilbert Brown. Get out that shovel. I guess he doesn't do it on busted screen passes, just on sacks. How about Big Gilbert, a former track guy? Well, there's no question. He's gotten better and better here in the last two years at being able to move. He's lost all that weight. We've talked about that. He sniffs out the screen right there, and it has the agility. Not only does he read it out, but he has the agility to, to get over there and make the play. What his, uh, his trainer comes in and asks him what he's eating all the time. He said, oh, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can, but a man's got to have a little grease every once in a while. <laughs> He's lost all that weight down to 339. That should be a time of day, not a weight. Second down, Jurovicius out to the 25. Two yards shy of the first down, a gain of 12. For Brad Johnson, he is seeing terrific protection so far in this ball game. That has been the issue throughout this season. For him to be able to stand back there for three, four seconds like that and not get hit as soon as he delivers the football, that is a major upgrade from what we've seen from the Buccaneers' offensive line for the rest of the year. Yeah, actually, it has improved over the last two games, and that's partly why Brad Johnson has been able to put the numbers up that he has had the last two games so far. Third down and two. pass is incomplete. It hit the ground. Jurovicius couldn't hang on. You know, last week, Tyrone Williams got beat a few times in that game against Minnesota. Right here, tight coverage against a big receiver in Jurovicius, and Tyrone Williams plays that ball pretty good. Able to make the play, knock it out, keep them from getting a first down. Tyrone Williams, early MVP in this ball game. He got the tip pass for the interception, comes in on a big third down there. He's kind of the whipping boy up in Green Bay. He takes a lot of abuse for his play. 4 16 remaining in the first half. Tupas had a rough day and it continues. Another ugly punt, but how about the bounce? Tupas been living on these bounces so far this afternoon. Penalty flag on the play. It's a hold against Tampa. And with the way Tupa's been punting it, you got to make him punt it again. You know, you're right. The way he's been punting in, in games recently, but Friday, and now they change it and they say hold defense. So Johnny Greer initially pointed the wrong way. Well, he knew it was one of those two. I was going to say, Friday out at practice when he was punting, he was punting Holding 70 yards. 73 of the receiving team during the kick. 
a big part of it during the kick, meaning that Green Bay will maintain possession of the ball as opposed to an automatic first down. Green Bay, the ball and the lead here in Tampa. An old friendship renewed here in Tampa, Warren Sapp and Brett Favre. Now a lot more public with the respect that they have for one another. Sapp has sacked Favre eight times, more than any other quarterback that he's dropped. Amon Green. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Well, these two guys have always seemed to end up in each other's face. And they talked about a meeting back in 97, the end of the third quarter, when Favre came up to Sapp and said, where are you going, fat boy? <laughs> and Sapp said, where are you going, playboy? And a, and a mutual respect ensued. Second down and 10. Favre throws, Glenn is smacked. Short of a first down as Kelly lays a big hit on Cherry Glenn. How about some more Mike Vick highlights? Let's go for a game break. In hey, LA. Joe, Troy, and Chris, take a look. This week's version of Mike Vick highlights, if you will. Hey, Troy, take a look at Vick. Just still looking downfield, no matter the pressure. Hooks up with Warwick Dunn, 31-yard pass play. One of many highlights in a 3-1-0 spike in Carolina. Back to Joe, Troy, and Chris. Third and two. Green. Bounces it outside. And picks up a first down. How impressive, guys, is William Henderson when you sit down and talk to the Green Bay fullback? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, you watch him right here, and he's going to take out Simeon Rice, and that is what allows Amon Green to get on the corner and pick up that first down. And he's one of those guys who just does not get enough credit. He plays at a high level week in and week out and takes tremendous pride in his ability to block and help Amon Green in this running game. He calls himself a linebacker in a fullback's uniform as we reach the two-minute warning here in Tampa, Florida. Brett Favre trying to win for the first time in this stadium. A 7 to nothing lead. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Gateway, a better way. about integrity. Tell the truth. That's easy. Just give it to me straight. What we're asking for is a little honesty. You know what we deserve? Accountability. These days, I need integrity. I'm an investor. I'm an investor. So as an investor, I have to be able to trust you. At the New York Stock Exchange, we agree. So do 2,800 of the world's best companies that meet the highest standards. So every shareholder can invest with trust and confidence. I think I deserve that. The Citizen Echo Drive. It never needs a battery because light recharges it. So, what will you do with your battery? Now that your watch doesn't need one. Looking for the perfect gift that'll brighten everyone's holiday? Just head around the corner for our new gift card from Applebee's. Eating good in the neighborhood. When they built this new stadium, they started with the speakers and the sound system and then built everything else around it. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, GB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. We'll have scores and highlights from around the league, and the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. Two minutes left, first half. And a first down carry, a rare carry for Tony Fisher. He gets it out to the 23. 
One of the keys for the Green Bay Packers is can William Henderson, the fullback, get through the initial line of scrimmage and get up on these linebackers. Guys like Derek Brooks, even John Lynch dropping down as a safety. That time Henderson able to get through the initial thrust, get a hat on Shelton Quarles and set up a nice run. Second down and eight. Again, it's Fisher. A gain of three. And third down coming up, so you know Tampa Bay has two timeouts remaining. Well, and what's interesting is that Green Bay, with all three of their timeouts, is not trying to get into the no huddle, speed it up, get down a position to try to get a field goal, potentially a touchdown. Normally, they are much more aggressive at this stage in a half, but they have tremendous respect for this Tampa defense and their ability to create turnovers. And right now, it looks like they're going to be happy going in at halftime, 7-0. Seven, seven if they do, a stop here, and Tampa Bay could get it back with time left. It's third down and five, and they hand off to Green. Now you'll see Tampa Bay Tampa take a Bay timeout. Will use a timeout with 35 seconds remaining in the half. So the Buccaneers will get it back. The question is, can they do anything with it? Down by seven. Until after Thanksgiving, shop early and save big at Radio Shack's pre-Thanksgiving sale. Save 50 to 100 bucks instantly on PCS wireless phones from Sprint. Get a $25 mail-in rebate on most PDAs. For the movie lover on your list, an RCA home theater in a box with DVD is $50 off. And for the health conscious, get our exclusive Environizer air purifiers from Honeywell. So shop early and save big at the pre-Thanksgiving sale at Radio Shack. My favorite Black & Decker is the bullseye. Some people believe there's a carpentry gene, and I think I got it. Hanging things, I'm a little hit or miss on. My daughter, Tony, made a really nice vase. And a mug. It's a mug. It was a mug-like vase. Daddy made a nice shelf, and it fell down and broke. But the bullseye, it's foolproof. I just find a stud, hang it on the wall, and it self-levels. It gives you a straight line every time. It self-levels. It does. Yes, not me, it. Things are good. The bullseye from Black & Decker to stop the threat. There's a nuclear bomb in Los Angeles. Oh, my God. We're running out of time. There's only one person Jack Bauer can turn to. We set up an interrogation room. We got somebody coming in. <gasps> the traitor who killed his wife. Hold on for the moment everyone's waited for. 24, all new, 98 Central Fox Tuesday. Johnson and Johnson talking to John Gruden, trying to figure out a way to get something going offensively. It's a very public problem with the offense with Tampa Bay. Their last three playoff losses, they failed to score a touchdown. So the Tampa Bay organization paid a dear price to bring John Gruden down here as head coach, taking him away from Oakland. And so far, the offense in their biggest game of the year hasn't done anything. Carl Williams from inside the 25. They'd love a big return. And good field position at their own 41 with 23 seconds left and one timeout remaining. 16-yard return from Carl Williams. And Brad Johnson heads back to work. Take all the time you want, folks. We'll take this one in red. Beautiful choice, sir. No. Black. Black. That's actually my favorite color. <laughs> red. Definitely red. With Microsoft server software, you can quickly connect with customers. That's software for the agile business from Microsoft. Hey, hello. 
When you can stay connected, yet be free, that's M-Life from AT&T Wireless. Plans to keep you connected start at $19.99 a month. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Did you know his favorite color is green? Did you know he has a pet ferret named Ricardo? You know, every time he sees the sunset, he cries. So how do you know he likes his food made this way? Come on. Subway makes every sandwich just the way you want it. Hey, Kisa. Hi. Everyone's unique. That's why Subway makes every sandwich fresh just the way you want. With your choice of delicious meats, topping, sauces, all on fresh baked bread. How do you know I have a ferret? I have my ways. Subway, he's fresh! If it wasn't for football on Thanksgiving, I'd be stuck at the kids' table all day. It's on. It's on. This season, the Buccaneers offense has not been shut out in the first half. The team in general, and this is a Tampa Bay team that gets a lot of scores on defense. Really, neither one of these offenses have done very much. The Packers got an interception in a short field, and that's the only way they got their touchdown. If you ask Brett Favre, how good is this team? How does it compare to the Super Bowl team back in 96? He says we are nowhere close to being as good as we were then. And that surprised me. That surprised me when I heard Brett say that because you talk to other people in this organization and they feel that they are. 23 seconds left. Tampa Bay down by seven. Over the middle, Keyshawn Johnson. Hangs on down to the 20. And the Buccaneers will use their final timeout. Well, now you have to go back a little bit to the decision by head coach Mike Sherman to be conservative when they had the football. Well, you got Kabir Bajabiamila coming off the edge, working against Ken Dilger. He's not able to get there, but you got Keyshawn Johnson, and he's going to be running a square in route. Matt Bowen, the safety, is going to be the one right there who has a chance to bring him down. And Matt Bowen is very good when he's up into the eighth man against the run. He's not real good when he's back in coverage. You got to find a way to make that tackle. He doesn't. And now the Buccaneers are in field goal range. And they have 11 seconds left and maybe a shot at the end zone here before Trot Martin Gramatica onto the field. Obviously, yep. you have to be very careful here not to take the sack, not to throw a, a ball that's caught in the field of play because they have no timeout, so it's the end zone quickly or nothing. From the 20, Johnson throws it quickly, corner of the end zone, and there's nothing there. John Johnson come back in and made the catch. It would have been an illegal touch. He was out of bounds as the ball was headed his direction. And Martin Gramatica will try to put points on the board for the Buccaneers at the end of the first half. This will be a 38-yard try. You see the numbers for Gramatica this season. Big man hoping that a little man can help the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get on the board, and the little man does. It's a 7-3 score with defenses dominating the first half here in Tampa, Florida. Stay tuned for the Visa Halftime Report. J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy right after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Next Sunday, for anyone who's ever done hard time at the office. We are sick of your cost cutting. We want our cream back and our forks, knives, and spoons. No more sporks and knives and knife foons. It's like a Dr. Seuss kitchen down there. Comes the comedy that proves your co-workers are as crazy as you think. Is that coffee? I didn't see coffee. Oh! Do you see it now? Andy Richter. All new episodes start at 9.30, 8.30 Central next Sunday. G35 Coupe.
when did it start for you? I'm a Ford truck man. That's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries. I don't compromise. Ain't no doubt my king of the mountain built Ford truck. Ain't no doubt you can get a great deal because now you can get a 2003 Ford F-150, America's best-selling full-size truck for 25 years running with 0% APR or 2,000 cash back. Or get a built Ford Tough 2003 Ranger with 0% APR or 2,000 cash back. Visit your Southern Ford dealer. There is a limited time before Toyota's national Thanksgiving event ends. See your Toyota dealer now for great deals on Camry, like financing as low as 0.0% APR on all 2003 Camry models, or lease a 2003 Camry LE for $239 a month for 48 months with $1,738 due at signing. So hurry, because this event is rapidly approaching the zero hour. Don't wait. Toyota's national Thanksgiving event ends December 2nd. The power of GMC. Nothing from nothing beats the best. Nothing beats the power of zero down payment. Zero payments for 90 days and 0% financing on every new GMC. Nothing from nothing beats nothing. You gotta have something. Get any new GMC with zero down payment. Zero payments for 90 days and 0% financing. Upgrade to professional grade. See the pros at your Florida GMC dealers. Nothing from nothing beats We'll show you how to cut your cable bill in half Tuesday after 24. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. And welcome to the Visa Halftime. Those of you watching Green Bay and Tampa Bay, a conservatively paid play ball game. There is a Green Bay on top by the score of 7-3 to three in that one taking place in Tampa. Lawrence Sapp, Red Favre, banging it up. Right off the bat, though, you see Johnson hit by Bonnie Holiday, shaking up, finger in the eye, has to leave this game, replaced in the second quarter by the other Johnson. Wow. Then, all of a sudden, Rob Johnson, that is, he's looking for Keyshawn Johnson, pass deflected and picked off by Niall. How you see it? Niall Diggs. Diggs. There you go. There you go. Here we're a team. And then on the ensuing drive, far up to Donald Driver, four-yard touchdown pass. And a very tight game, 7-3, pack over the Buccaneers. All right, pending the extra point here, it is 6-3. Tiki Barber with a two-yard touchdown run. Giants on top of the Texans right now. Raiders 21-14 over the Cardinals. Raiders are looking for their third straight victory on the season. Kansas City and Seattle, 17-14 ball game taking place up there in the Pacific Northwest. Priest Holmes now with nine straight games with a touchdown. Redskins snap the Rams' five-game winning streak, improved to five and six. The Rams dropped to five and six. And the Falcons all over spanking the Panthers. They have now outscored them 71-0 in two games. The Browns up in the New Orleans Saints improved to six and five with the victory there. The Bears snap an eight-game losing streak. Lions, Lions now 14-game road losing streak. Vikings come back to make a game of it, but the Patriots win it. The Dolphins with Ray Lucas playing an efficient game. Ricky Williams impressive on the ground, over 100 yards. Curtis Martin, the story in the Jets over the Bills, 31-13 in that contest. And the Cowboys, uncharacteristically, 21-19. They're the least scoring team in the NFL. And the Ravens nurse a one-point victory over the Titans. And the Bengals lose to the Steelers, 29-21. Jimmy, we were talking about the attitude going into this game, Tampa Bay, Green Bay. JV, you've got the number one and the number two team in the NFL as far as turnover ratio. They win their games by getting takeaways with their defense. They win with their defense. Both coaches went into this game said, hey, we're going to be somewhat conservative. We're going to protect the ball. We are not going to beat ourselves. And that's exactly how they played out the first half. Yeah, and Brad Johnson gets hurt. Rob Johnson comes in in subbing for him, throws a pick off a deflection. The crowd's chanting for Sean King, but because Sean King was listed as the number three quarterback, if they bring him into the game, they then cannot bring Brad Johnson back into the football game. Don't worry, most of you, some of you sense? will be going to absolute yep. sense. Some of you sure. will be going to local news. Yeah, yeah. And those who were disappointed that Terry it. didn't <laughs> talk much, the blonde bomber comes back with his highlight on special after this. No, 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 no. Visa is proud to celebrate the fans this season. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be.
Jimmy Johnson and the NASCAR Young Guns were born to make racing more exciting. The Daytona 500 returns this February only on Fox. Fox tonight. To get the hot girl, Malcolm's got to play dumb. Allison's a moron. So he's going to turn to the master for help. His brother. I can actually feel my brain click off. You didn't by any chance find that coffee can in the garage, did you? Plus, look who's got a crush on Lois. Ooh. It's so nice to have a boy in the house who's not a rude little monster. Hey, was that shot at me? Yes, honey, it was. Don't miss an all-new hour of Malcolm in the Middle at 9, 8 Central, tonight on Fox. This is Derek Brooks of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He supports the United Way. He has a way with kids. Okay, okay, who wants to sing my favorite song? Good. Who's my favorite player? Mr. Derek Brooks. 153 tackles. 36 assists. Two times all pro. How many? Three times all pro. Better. Let's start again. Who's our favorite player? Derek. Good, good. Derek. Hi there, I'm Cecily Wilson. We'll get back to the game in just a moment. But first, this Fox 13 News update. Crowds celebrating Ohio State's football win over Michigan went on a rampage. Fans set fires and damaged cars in areas south and east of the campus. Columbus police used tear gas and wooden pellets to disperse a crowd of several hundred people. At least 45 people were arrested. The traditional day after Thanksgiving shopping rush is just days away. Fox 13's Eric Seidel has put together a holiday shopping survival guide. Here's a preview of what you'll see Monday night on the Fox 13 10 o'clock news. With holiday shopping almost upon us, wouldn't saving a few bucks on presents be nice? In the past, smart shoppers headed to the outlet mall to find the bargain. So what's the real deal? Can you still save money at the outlets? To find out, we shopped for the exact same items here at the local mall and at the outlet mall. Which saves you the most money? I'm consumer lawyer Eric Seidel. I'll have the results of our comparison test Monday night at 10. And here's a look at your Sky Tower forecast with meteorologist Andy Johnson. Thanks, Cecily. This morning there was some frost north and east of Tampa, but tomorrow morning it will not be as cool as it has been. We're expecting mostly clear skies tonight, the low temperature falling to 54. Then for tomorrow it should be mostly sunny with a high of 76, a little bit warmer than what we've been seeing. For the next seven days, temperatures will remain on the mild side, and even on Thanksgiving Day, temperatures will range from 59 to 73 with no rain. Let's go back over the news desk with Cecily. All right, thanks, Andy. That's all the time we have for now. We'll see you back here tonight at 10, right after Malcolm in the Middle. Enjoy the game. Behind him is a 400 square foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of a 6-speed, 200 horsepower Acura RSX Type S. APR on all 2002 and 2003 Cadillac models at your Cadillac dealer. Hi, folks. How you doing today? Good, thanks. Mmm, that looks good. Mom, can I think I thought... Notice anything different at McDonald's? Oh, one second. Will this help? You will. Thank you. We're working hard to bring you cleaner restaurants and friendlier service. At McDonald's, we're on it. Remember when I had that much energy? No.
Infiniti G35 Coupe. When did it start for you? We'll show you how to cut your cable bill in half Tuesday after 24. Peyton, what are we going to do? The game's on the line. All right, hook and lateral. Ready? Break! There's midfield with seconds on the clock. Hey. If they complete a pass, I don't think they can get it out of bounds and stop the clock. This is a classic. It's all yours. Nah, I got my own. The size you want, the team you want. Get your own gridiron classic available at NFL Shop on NFL.com. Start of the second half, 7-3 Green Bay. Moments ago, stopping by to talk with Pam Oliver, John Gruden. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Coach, tell me some of the things you want to try to do offensively to get a few more points on the board. We just got to keep playing. You know, we had a couple good drives early. One ended in an interception. We don't convert a third and one, and we mishandle a third down pass. We got to get a little better mixture, and obviously having Brad Johnson back in here helps us. Did that get you off us off uh, key there in the beginning when he went out? Did that seem to get you guys out of sync? Well, it always has an impact, whether it's good or bad, and obviously that one didn't help us much. But, uh, hey, we got no excuses now. We got to play a little bit better and win this game. All right, thank you. Let's go back upstairs to Joe. All right, Pam, thanks. You look at the stats from the first half. Really not much in the way of total yards. Three three and outs for Tampa Bay. Only seven first downs for each side. And the one turnover, something that the Buccaneers with this low-scoring offense can't afford to do as Green Bay took the turnover and got seven points off it. Well, that's been the big difference. There's no question about it. And John Gruden said it best. They failed to convert on a third down. They have the turnover, which sets up Green Bay's touchdown. And that's been the difference in this game. Slipping as he kicks it, but on a line, this is Stecker. Nice return by Stecker as he gets it out just across the 35-yard line. Torrance Marshall made the stop, and we've said his name quite a few times so far today on special teams. You almost get the feeling that the Packers are trying to beat the Buccaneers at their own game. Being conservative, not turning the football over, forcing this Buccaneer offense to beat them with a long drive down the field. They haven't shown that sort of capability throughout the season, but the most impressive part of the first half for me was the fact that Tampa Bay's offensive line has been doing a great job against this defensive line from the Packers. I really feel like now the Packers or the Bucks can open it up. They start with a toss to Pittman running left and he forces his way out to the 39. Let's go back down to the field. All right, Joe, on the other side of the ball, Mike Sherman said he thinks the Packers are doing a good job by not making a lot of mistakes in this game. He says we just have to keep doing what we're doing, only better, and get the ball in the end zone. By the way, an ophthalmologist did check out Brad Johnson at halftime. His vision is A-OK. -okay. Back to you. All right, Pam, thanks. And now someone will have to take a look at Gilbert Brown. 6'2", 339, the nine-year player out of Kansas, is down and injured here in the third quarter. 7-3, Green Bay with the lead and the Buccaneers with the football. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by December 12th. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Mr. Friday. What is that? Double glazed baby back ribs. And where are the utensils? Tonight, dig into our mouth-watering double glazed baby back ribs. Glazed twice for a one-of-a-kind Friday's taste. They shared as children. Something has come back to collect us. It was only supposed to be a dream. Wes Craven presents They. Rated PG-13. In theaters everywhere. Wednesday. We stay, boys. Let's go get a couple beers. I don't know, man. I told my gal I'd be home early. Dude, it's the rock. Be home early, brother. You wanna roll with the kids? said earlier.
Really? <laughs> forever, forever. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Coors Original, real golden beer, the official sponsor of Guys Night Out. Center Jeff Christie is going to get his helmet on the back of Gilbert Brown's leg. Looks like it just gave out. Can't tell exactly what the injury is. They just got Brown off the field, and now it's second down for Tampa Bay. He keeps Keyshawn Johnson over on the near side of the field. Out of the backfield. That's Pittman. And a nice hit by Tyrone Williams coming up to make the stop. A gain of only one. So looking at the left leg of Gilbert Brown. They're looking at the back part of the leg. He did walk off under his own power. And it didn't look like Jeff Christie had really done anything to, to cause that other than him losing his balance. I think it was in the process of falling that he might have twisted that ankle. Early word on Brown, his return is questionable. It's third down and six. A blitz coming from Green Bay, and Johnson in trouble, throws it away. And a flag comes in at the end of the play. Todd McBride roughed Brad Johnson, and this will give Tampa Bay a big first down. One of the problems when you have defensive backs on the blitz, oftentimes they don't understand the roughing the passer rules that apply to all pass rushers. Roughing the passer. Pretty tough call right there in a championship caliber football game. He jumped on his back, and I think the fact that he drove him on down to the ground and actually made the tackle, but he was sort of in midair. Yeah, he had Brad by the shoulder pads prior to the ball coming out, but I guess in the official's view, he should have then backed off once he unloaded the football. I don't like that call very much at all. I, this game's too big to make it decided by a call like that. See what happened a week ago in the loss in Minnesota for Green Bay 13 times. They were flagged for an infraction. As Pittman runs up the middle, I've got two. Well, now with Gilbert Brown out of the ball game, it looks like Tampa Bay is at least going to test the interior where Gilbert Brown was. Well, they're going to try to test this, this front here for Green Bay, and Green Bay defensively has had problems the last several weeks stopping the run. Teams are getting five yards of carry on average against them, but it's a little bit misleading because there's been a couple of really big runs that have inflated some of those numbers. Ron Walker and Steve Warren, the interior spots on the defensive line for Green Bay as Stecker, or rather McCardell, is flipped. Williams made the tackle, and McCardell came down shy of the first down, but inside the 40, a gain of five. And it will be third down coming up. And I think John Gruden agrees with me with what's happening on this offensive line. Troy, you hit on it earlier. They really didn't want to go to their three wide receiver sets because they're concerned with pass protection. But now, because they're doing a good job, they're starting to spread it out and open up this offense. Also may be able to use the abilities of Ken Dilgermore, the tight end who goes in motion. Third down, and Johnson hit as he let it go by Holliday. The pass incomplete. And Tupa comes on the field for a Tampa Bay punt. And Bonnie Holiday, who's missed the last six games due to injury, you see him here. He comes up inside. Kerry Jenkins is unable to get a hand on him. And you get a straight beeline shot on the quarterback, that's tough. And Kerry Jenkins, who's out there, the left guard, he's playing with a fractured fibula and hasn't missed a game due to that injury. six. Corey Ivey got down the field in a hurry and was on the receiving end of a 33-yard punt from Tupa. Green Bay takes over.
Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why. cup of coffee could do that much damage. Fred, is a prayer supposed to smoke like that? Hey, Fred, I think I fried the motherboard and the fatherboard, too. Dealing with technology is hard. That's why CDW makes buying it as simple as possible, by having brand-name technology products in stock so you can get what you need when you need it. Fred, where are you going? My email's still down. CDW, the right technology right away. They're the two biggest things to ever happen to the Simpsons when Marge accidentally gets implants. Great mother of Bart, what a done. Just focus on Mommy's face. I'm trying, I'm trying. The Simpsons, all new at 8, 7 central tonight on Fox. Now. Seven three Green Bay with 12.03 remaining third quarter and a handoff to Amon Green who runs into Quarles. And a gain of two. Well, you take a look at what Brett Favre has done and where he's thrown the football right here under 10. He's got seven of eight is what he's completed, but he hasn't thrown much other than that. And in talking with him, he said he was going to have to be patient. The other thing is, yeah, they might be able to throw some things down the field and get some good matchups, but the offensive line would not be able to protect long enough. Yeah, but he's Brett Favre. At some point, you have to cut him loose. Instead, they keep it on the ground, and Amon Green lowers his head and gets to the 11, a gain of four, third down coming up. I don't think it's about cutting him loose. I think it's worried about getting him cut in half. You know, going against that defensive front for Tampa Bay, he said that if we can hold the ball long enough, we can allow our receivers to work down the field, which is to our advantage. We just don't feel like we can get the protection up front to allow him to get the ball off. got on the previous drive. Those 15 yards really shifted the field position. Then the great punt backs them up, and now the Buccaneers offense should get this ball in great position with a chance to go take the lead. And I think that's been the formula for this Tampa Bay team is their defense give their offense great field position, create turnovers. Now Tampa's going to get the ball in great position. Beautiful punts. Bidwell sends Williams back to the 35. Well, in a battle of field, field position, you look at guys like punters and kickers, and Josh Bidwell comes up with his best of the day at a great time for Green Bay. me. I'm smiling. Pick me. Please. You pick the dog over your brother? No, not the dog. The HP All-in-One printer with proof sheet makes it easy to pick and print just the right shots. Oh, that hurts. Tiki, mom's gonna love these. Hi. Hey, hey, take a check? I'm just gonna need some ID. Okay. How do I know this is you? Because it looks just like him. But it's me. Okay. But it looks like him. This says that you were born... 1975. Okay. But it could still be him. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. So, are, are you guys related? Honey, look. A first Christmas. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you remember what I gave you? A stuffed reindeer? <laughs> I think I did better this year. 
This holiday, what can you give the woman who said she'd love you forever and has? A three-stone diamond ring from K Jewelers would be a great start. And you could be assured of two things. First, that every K diamond is hand-selected for exceptional beauty. And second, that she'll absolutely love it. You did a lot better this year. Every kiss begins with K. To stop the threat. There's a nuclear bomb in Los Angeles. Oh, my God. We're running out of time. There's only one person Jack Bauer can turn to. We set up an interrogation room. We got somebody coming in. <gasps> the traitor who killed his wife. Hold on for the moment everyone's waited for. 24, all new, 98 Central Fox Tuesday. Those must be lucky gloves. A Green Bay Packer fan down here in Tampa. It's 70 degrees. First green Bay, it's 30. It's a first down for the Buccaneers, starting from their own 40, down by four. Johnson, middle of the field, Pittman. First down inside the 40. So many people have talked about why not Mike Allstott in the ball game. Here's exactly why. You go to the spread formation, you're able to take Michael Pittman on the outside one-on-one -on -one and beat the guy down the field. That is something that Mike Allstott simply can't bring to this offense, that ability to stretch a defense. Back to the no huddle. It's a first down. And that's Gilbert. Still pushing his way forward. And brought down a yard shy of another first down. Gain of nine. So Tampa Bay is going back to that no huddle offense. They're not trying to beat the clock. They're taking their time doing it. But the, what it does, as we spoke about earlier, it keeps the Green Bay Packers from substitutions. And they want to keep this current package on the field. The other thing is, if you look back to last week, Minnesota Vikings went to the no huddle formation and had tremendous success early in that ball game. Bajab Biamila standing on the sidelines alongside Bonnie Holiday. On second down and one, and Allstock gets the first down to the 25. The one place I do think that Mike Allstock is at his best is as we get on towards the fourth quarter and the defenses get tired, it is very difficult to tackle a big guy like that. You look at his career numbers, his touchdowns, first quarter nine, second quarter eight, third quarter seven, fourth quarter 20 touchdowns. And as we saw earlier this season against the Cleveland Browns, he can simply wear out a team late in the ball game. A word on Gilbert Brown getting x-rays on his ankle. It's first down Tampa Bay and a toss to Pittman. Only two yards. Niall Diggs made the stop. Let's look at the Green Bay Packers and what they've done in their franchise history at home. 13-0 in the playoffs while on the road 7-10. And, and the Buccaneers' all-time playoff record 3-1 in Tampa, 0-6 oh on the road. And we mentioned their last three losses. No touchdowns. The NFC, the best records, the top two teams meeting here. Then Philadelphia, they play on Monday night. They play San Francisco, and Atlanta wins again today. They're 7-3-1. On second down. Penalty flag on the play as the pass was behind Keyshawn Johnson incomplete. And what it looked like was Keyshawn Johnson was coming in motion towards the formation. He left a little bit early. You can see him there. He knows the call's on him. You take a look at Keyshawn. He starts right there up the field vertically before the ball snapped, and that's another point of emphasis that these officials are looking for this year. Number 19, offense. Moving forward at the snap, it's declined. Third down. So Green Bay declines the penalty. And it'll be third down and nine. Three drops today for Keyshawn Johnson. And there's no doubt that those ribs are bothering the three-time Pro Bowl. Yeah, but they shouldn't bother him in knowing what the snap count is. On third down, Johnson has time and throws it away. And a penalty flag is going to come in. And if this is grounding, and it is grounding, it's going to cost Tampa Bay yardage and may push 
with them to the outer reaches of Dramaticus field goal range. Yeah, I don't agree with that call at all. There was a receiver, I believe it was Aaron, might have been Keenan McCardell who was out there. Well, on a grounding call, it's also loss of down, so it'll be fourth down. Intentional grounding, number 14, offense. It's also a loss of down, fourth down. So that makes it roughly a 50-yard field goal try. We'll call it 51. You have to be kidding me on that play. So what's a quarterback supposed to do? You're allowed to throw the ball out of bounds. Yeah, it was a little bit high and over the top, but... I just, I totally disagree with that call. Yeah, especially in a, in a day where they're trying to protect quarterbacks as much as they can. Receivers in the vicinity, the ball's thrown over his head. I agree with you, Chris, it's the best ball. Dramatica pounds it. And it's a one-point game. Off the right foot of Martin Dramatica. And as it sails through, it's 7-6, Green Bay. Digital camera. Wow! An HP all-in-one printer. Wow! An Office Depot person who will be there if I have any questions. Office Depot has all the latest technology, like easy-to-use HP digital imaging products for long-lasting film-quality digital pictures. And Office Depot has the people to demonstrate how everything works. All at Office Depot's everyday low prices that are sure to please every family. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. By Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken. By Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. From Chris Collinsworth to Troy Aikman to Warren Sapp, who's pleading the case to Johnny Greer. And you can see Johnny Greer saying he threw it way over his head. That's why he threw the flag. He's really no harm, no foul. It's dramatic to hit the field goal anyway. Yeah, Warren, very, very careful, though. Johnny's going to hit him with that team bag. Dramatica. He's been in a week-long war of words with Todd Sauerbrunn, the Carolina punter. Gets rid of it, and Javon Walker crosses the 25, knocked down at the 26. All right, Thanksgiving Day, the undisputed champion of pregame shows returns with J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. They get you ready for a holiday tradition, and there you go. Jimmy Johnson sits down with Jerry Jones. Talk about the future of the Cowboys and of the NFL. Then it's a Fox NFL special as the Redskins take on the Cowboys. Coverage begins Thanksgiving Day, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, only on Fox. From their own 26, first down Green Bay, leading by a point. Now they open it up, and it's picked off by Kelly. Out of bounds inside the 20.
interception. He is having a huge season so far this year. That is his fourth interception in the last five ball games. Great play right there, putting the ball back down in Green Bay territory, giving this ball back to the offense in great field position. And Troy, there's no way that was any kind of an option route down the field by Terry Glenn. He was either supposed to cut in or he wasn't. Obviously, Brett Favre thought that he was, and my guess is that Terry Glenn probably blew the route. Clearly a miscommunication between those two because for the first time, really, Brett Favre tries to go seven steps on his drop. They want to get the ball down the field and try to push it like you and I talked about earlier. He had the time. Terry Glenn just wasn't expecting the pass. Chad Clifton is injured at the end of that play. They take a look at the left tackle. Guys are counting on me. Gotta go. Just one night. Just one night. Nice pants. Nice pants. Nice pants. Hi. Nice pants. Where have they been? Presenting Dockers Go Khaki with Stained Offender. See? This deal sounds too good to be true. This can't be legal. A big and tasty for just one dollar. The McDonald's dollar menu. Lots of choices, one dollar each every day, including sandwiches like the tender big and tasty or juicy McChicken. Turn your dollar into something tasty. <laughs> what do you care? You've got the goodness of Reese's peanut butter and milk chocolate. Get lost and a Reese's. Hey, look, it's only a dollar. Mm. Don't waste your money. Great. Pam needs a second opinion. Luckily, T-Mobile has a camera phone that doesn't cost a fortune. Carry on. The Ivory Toad of Shanghai. Can I borrow a buck? Introducing the $100 camera phone, only from T-Mobile. Get me. Access NFL.com to vote for your favorite NFL All-Stars. The Pro Bowl ballot is online exclusively at NFL.com. It's free skates for a guy like Warren Sapp on an interception return, and he lays out Clifton. Boy, he left, he left his feet, too. I mean, he launched himself on that one. Yet, they look at the lower half of Clifton. Well, don't forget that Chad Clifton's had the bad knee you heard back in the New England game that we called. Gilbert Brown's x-ray is being examined as well, so it's been a pretty tough afternoon for the Packers, but Chad Clifton's really been doing a terrific job since coming back, but they're starting to fall down now for the Packers. Well, it's been a tough game. It's been a tough season for the Packers, who have seen one player go down after another due to injury, and now Clifton's back on the list. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving. Shop early and save big at Radio Shack's free Thanksgiving sale. Get 10 to $100 in rebates on all Motorola phones. Get a free extra handset with the purchase of select Radio Shack 2.4 gigahertz cordless phones. Save an additional $100 instantly with any desktop system or notebook computer purchase. Plus, get a PlayStation 2 value pack exclusively at Radio Shack. So shop early and save big at the pre Thanksgiving sale at Radio Shack. Coming into this game, the Green Bay Packers had lost 34 games, so to speak, missed by starters. Clifton's already missed action. In fact, during that time, because of his versatility, Mike Flanagan, the starting center, went out and started at the left tackle spot. And now they have to get Clifton on a stretcher just to get him off the field. They've already lost Gilbert Brown, who knows for how long, and at some point, in this day and age in the NFL, you suffer enough injuries, you're just not going to withstand it. Well, it's hard to withstand it, there's no question, but unfortunately, injuries are a part of this game, and the teams that are able to overcome them, the Green Bay Packers have done a great job of that throughout this season. Those are the ones that are going to go on and accomplish what it is that they want to accomplish, and you made a great point, Joe. They're fortunate that they have a guy like Mike Flanagan. He has already played some in left tackle this season. When Chad Clifton missed time previously, there was a chance in today's ball game he would be playing right guard, 
because of the injury to Marco Rivera. But there are very few centers in this league, none that I know of other than Flanagan, that is that flexible to go from center and play left tackle and play at a high level. But he doesn't like it. He doesn't want to play out there. We, we talked to him in Green Bay. He said, I like being down in there where I can get a lot of help. You get out on that island, it's a pretty tough day. You know, and then you bring in Frank Winters at center, and he's a guy who only had five snaps last year. And Winters is a 16-year veteran. Uh, the time off last year has helped him. He's filled in at center, and he's done a great job when he's been called upon. John Mark Tauscher standing there in street clothes. They lost him early. He's arguably their best offensive lineman. Just starting to talk to him about a contract extension, and then he was lost for the year. And the injuries just continue to ravage this Green Bay Packer team. Yeah, I think probably the guy who doesn't get enough credit for what's happened in this offensive front is Larry Bechtel, the offensive line coach. And he's the guy who has tried to move people around. You see Larry right here. He's the offensive line coach. And he's done a great job of trying to mix and match this offensive line throughout the season. They've had very few games when their original starting five going into the season have played and finished the game together. But you also have to remember now that with all the shuffling going on, it's not like you're playing against some second-rate pass rush. This is probably the best in football with Simeon Rice coming off the corner and, of course, Warren Sapp and company with the push up the middle. So it's going to be a very difficult assignment now for the Packers' offensive line. Still over seven minutes left in the third quarter, and whereas the first half just flew by here in Tampa, the second half is creeping along Hopefully, Clifton is better than he looks right there. Starting from the Green Bay 18. First down for the Buccaneers, who trail by one. All stuck. Still going. Down to the 12. A gain of six. Nate Wayne made the stop. Yeah, I really thought the turning point in the ball game was the roughing the passer call against Brad Johnson. That was a third down and about 13. And then all of a sudden it went from being a situation where they're going to have to punt the football in poor field position. They got another 15 yards, another first down, punted the ball down to the sixth. And that change of field position seemed to have changed the entire momentum. Tampa Bay. Handing it to Allstott again. He's got a first down, a gain of five. Well, now they're starting to get Mike Allstott a little bit more involved, and they like to start pounding him in the second half. You're going to see him get the ball, and Niall Diggs there, 59, playing outside contain. He comes up the field, creates a running lane there for Mike Allstott. Allstott, the only Buccaneer with a rushing touchdown this season. He has four of them. Pittman hasn't been in the end zone yet. Backfield of Jamil Cook and Mike Allstott. Allstott, third consecutive carry. Carries his nose down to the four, a gain of two. And they're really running right over where Gilbert Brown was. And you just sort of take for granted a guy that is six foot two and 300 and uh, whatever Gilbert was to say this week. <laughs> But without him in the lineup now, there just isn't the same kind of muscle up front. And Hardy Nickerson, the former Buccaneer, is going to have to take on a heavy load right now. Yeah, and they're doing it. The Buccaneers are running the football in a two-back set. Jamil Cook, the fullback, all stop the tailback. Not what Gruden normally likes to do, but that's the best formation they can get in to run the football with this group of personnel. Second down and goal. Johnson fires. Joe Vicious. Incomplete. Ty Williams with his hands up in the air, celebrating after a rough week in Minneapolis seven days ago. Well, he just runs out of real estate right here. Joe Juravicius has a chance. Oh. It, it doesn't look like he gets the left foot down, however, once he makes the grab. Had he have been able to drag that left foot, it would have been a touchdown. You see here, his right foot's in, but his oh, left foot know. never drags. I don't know. See this little spot? If we could back it up just a little bit. Watch this little bit of turf come out of this toe. If I can get that out of the way. That spot right there, that looks to me like maybe he did the toe tap. Well, they got the flag out. They're going to challenge it. And yeah, it'll be when that toe hit, did he, in fact, have the ball in his possession? I think that's really the question now, Troy. If 
he had the ball. Jurevicius win that left toe dug into the grass. Challenge the ruling on the field that the pass is incomplete. Catch, toe. Touchdown. That is a great job by Joe Jurevicius. Sometimes wide receivers are so good at doing this, it's very difficult for the official to try and pick it up. Remember now, the official's having to look to see whether or not the catch was made. Now, did the toe get down? It looks like a touchdown to me. Of course, I'm always a little biased toward the wide receivers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looked like from that angle, it looked like, as you mentioned, Joe, when he had, or Chris, when he had the toe on the ground, he did, in fact, have the ball. So, the one thing we have learned, sometimes we think we see something, but they see something entirely differently. It's anybody's guess exactly how they're going to rule on this play but it looks like right there with the ball in his hand and the left toe is right there on the ground as well of course we knew the right foot was already in but what makes it a no-brainer and thank goodness it's a grass field here is the fact that you get a divot the divot i think is going to win the case this time there's your divot going right there that's going to be what decides the whole thing well they ran the replay on the board that forced John Gruden to throw about a 20-yard flag toss onto the field. And there's the divot. Nothing like a good divot, you know? I mean, you get a divot like that, and you know you've got a touchdown. So that'll be exhibit A. And we'll see if Johnny Greer is buying it. You know, we sit around and study these football games, and you read all the notes, and you do all the work, and you interview the players, and then the game comes down to a divot. You can see the feet highlighted as Joe Jurevicius. He has his hands around the ball. The toes tapped down on the left foot. The crowd is reacting. They continue to see it. They see actually our replay up on the scoreboard. Great work by our crew. You can see the divot come up. And the crowd is expecting an overturn of the call, which was initially no catch. We'll get it now from Johnny Greer. After reviewing the play, the receiver gained control of the ball in the air. His right foot hit down. He dotted the eye with the left foot. Maintained possession when he hit the ground. We have a touchdown. Well, right now it's a five-point game, so while they celebrate, John Gruden sends his offense back onto the field to attempt a two-point conversion. That was a great job also of Joe Juravicius using his body to shield Tyrone Williams and giving him the opportunity to even attempt to make that catch. Big play in the ball game right here to make it a one-touchdown game if the Buccaneers can convert this. for one this season and Green Bay wasn't ready for it and in a tight game was forced to use a timeout. Now I have to say that's just inexcusable with all the stuff going on with the replay and all the time you had to think about it for them not to be ready when that ball was snapped. That's awful. See, Joe knew at the dinner. I think he was winking at Tyrone Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone's still trying to plead his case with the uh, juggle, but there is no juggle. Tyrone's still recovering from last week's onslaught in Minnesota. And they've been going after him a little bit here today as well. Now we've got a game cooking here. You can see Root, his last instructions to Brad Johnson was about an audible. So he is going to give Johnson an opportunity at the line to look at the defense and make an adjustment. Well, and that's something that John Gruden does a lot of. I mean, he's a very strong advocate of putting the putting the game in the quarterback's hands and letting him call some things at the line of scrimmage. No more crucial moment in the game than right here. This is to make it a seven-point lead. Johnson. You know, 
Troy, one of the things that's so hard when you get in that sort of cluster formation over here is you can't get a jam because the guys are afraid to get up and bump and run because they might get picked and Keyshawn able to take advantage. And then you're going to see John Gruden's reaction on that. And of course, Brad Johnson, he got a little move himself. He does something that he doesn't normally do. And Brad getting a little excited about this one. Described by his head coach, John Gruden, <laughs> as comatose. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, comatose. wait a minute. You're not comatose if you do that. I don't know what you are if you do that. <laughs> Besides disturbing. I don't think I want to see that again. You know, they've used Keyshawn Johnson more and more in that package down along the goal line. He's had a couple of touchdowns in recent weeks. They put him in there, down for the two-point conversion, run the crossing routes, which is what he's done. Get a big two-point conversion out of it. He gave a little credit to Brian Kelly, who once again comes up with a big play. Javon Walker on the run from the eight. To the 25, and that's it. Let's go back down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. All right, Joe, a couple of injury updates for you. Packers offensive lineman Chad Clifton, who was parted off the field a few moments ago. What we know right now, it's a right hip injury. X-rays are being done to determine the severity of that injury. X-rays on Gilbert Brown's ankle, negative. His return is unclear. Back to you. Thanks, Pam. Frank Winters now takes over at center. Flanagan will move out to the tackle spot to fill in for Clifton. And the thing Frank Winters has going for him is that he has played against Warren Sapp and these guys an awful lot over the course of his career. Understandably, these two teams have met twice a year up until this season. Wow. What a hit by Brooks on Tony Fisher. <laughs> good as a gift right there when you want to see a form tackle on how you take a guy and wrap him up and bring him down Derek Brooks just showed us I'm not sure anybody in the NFL has had a better season than has Derek Brooks defensive player of the month in October only linebacker to ever have three interceptions run for a touchdown in one season a huge year for Derek Brooks setting up the screen to Henderson the fullback First down, Green Bay. You know, it's a great call right there by the Green Bay Packers because you have on the outside Simeon Rice. You can just see him licking his chops with the opportunity to work against Mike Flanagan, a center. So what do they do? All right, go on up the field. We'll allow you to do it. Flip out the screen behind you with Henderson. Well, you see Rondé Barber coming up, make a tackle. Normally, he's a much more sure tackle. You wonder if maybe that thumb is affecting him, but he had a chance to get him to the ground. Now it's Amon Green to the arms of Ellis Wims, a gain of only three. Well, you get the feeling Mike Allstott is going to continue to be a big part of this offense. He got the ball quite a bit at the end of that, uh, that final drive, and now this is really his time of the game. He's the closer, if you will, Joe Buck, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, I know that touchdown for Tampa Bay. It has woke this crowd up. It is a deferred pitch out on the field right now. Shelton from the training staff, wide open is this side of the field, and far of a rare run. First down, Green Bay, at the 41-yard line of the Buccaneers, a gain of 17. Buccaneers defense completely faked out. Remember, they ran this counter bootleg in the first quarter and hit it for a big play. Brett Favre here with just nobody in front of him, able to take off and make a big play. Looks like his knee is feeling better, too, Troy. Yeah, Al Tremont Singleton was worried so much about keeping Bubba Frank in check that he let Brett Favre run right by him. Packers' longest play of the game, 17 yards. Incomplete. Amon Green was folded after not making the catch by Derek Brooks. Well, this is one of the few times that Warren Sapp's going to see single coverage. Mike Wall, the guard, working against them, and you see right there, he does an awfully good job against them. And actually, there's Marco Rivera, the right guard, who's playing injured. But rarely does Warren Sapp get an opportunity to work one on one, and he didn't expect to see any of that today. He had it there.
blitz from Barber. Complete to Glenn. That is all Brett Favre and a first down inside the Tampa Bay 30. You have got to be kidding me with this play. Here he is like a matador just waving off the bulls and the red shirts. There's one. There's two. Now throw it off my back foot and zip it in there with that kind of velocity. I'm just not sure there's another quarterback in football that could have made that play. Wow. 13 yards and a first down. Packers down by seven. Amon Green. Nice run to the 20. Near the 19. About a yard shy of a first down. Well, Marco Rivera right now, he's really doing a nice job. We showed him singled up on Warren Sapp. You see him right here, 62. Pulling right here. And he's going to pull out, kick out the end, which allows Amon Green to get up inside. But... Three consecutive blocks by Marco Rivera that have helped this offense. Second down and two. Amon Green. Lost yards. Well, we battle now, and it is just that in Tampa. We go back to Los Angeles for a game break. JB? Hey, Joe, show you what Houston is doing against the New York Giants. Take a look at the handoff here from David Carr to the Buckeye, Jonathan Well for the score. Two-point conversion here. David Carr hooking up with James Allen. It is good. It is now 13-7 Houston over the New York Giants. Back to Joe, Troy, and Chris. Third down and three for the Packers. Picked off Barber. He can use only his right hand. A penalty flag comes in late. Barber with a second Buccaneer interception of the afternoon. And that one's on Terry Glenn. I think he just completely sold out on this play. When you're... Personal foul, number 84, Green Bay, after the interception, will penalize 15 yards, first down. When you're running a slant up here at the top of the screen, you have to go fight for the football. Barber does and Terry Glenn just sells out on it. That is horrible. The one thing that you have to do as a wide receiver right there, you have to cross his face. Brett Favre expects him to cross his face. He throws the ball. Terry Glenn, not wanting to have contact, stops on the route. Rondé Barber's there to make the play. And for anybody that had questions whether or not he could catch the ball with one hand and a cast, he's answered that question. Last week was Favre's first game with multiple interceptions. He had three against the Vikings. He has two here in the second half. Penalty flag on the play. As Pittman gets to the 32. Hardy Nickerson made the stop. See if Tampa Bay got set before the snap, if that's the call or it's something else. It's against the Buccaneers. And for Terry Glenn, there are no mitigating circumstances in that situation. You have no choice on a slam route. Hit it hard, keep running, fight for your position. That is not Brett Favre's fault at all. That is all on Terry Glenn. Illegal formation, number 19, offense. Lined up in the backfield, we had six men on the line of scrimmage. Still first down. They added 15 yards, Troy, on the hit by Javon Walker. Yeah, here's Javon Walker right here. You get the interception, and then you take a look at him and see what happens. And you know, Dwight Smith comes up and bangs into him, and I don't know that he meant anything by it, but Javon Walker obviously frustrated by what happened on the play, and he's the one who gets caught. Yeah, let him play. It's an 11-point third quarter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which comes to a close right now. Down to the other end of the field, a 14-7 lead for Tampa Bay with one quarter to go. Back after this from your local Fox station. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Sam, I'm at the airport. Hey, welcome back, pal. You remember that conversation we had? I sure do, buddy. Uh, which conversation was that? The one where I said I don't do any ads. No ads. 
that Zai really got to start writing things down. Sam, that's the only one, right? Absolutely. That's it. It was a one-shot deal. Sam! There might be one or two uh, buses. Maybe. 20 years now. Where'd they go? 20 years. I don't know. I sit and I wonder sometimes where they've gone. He's an elbow man. My boy. Generation after generation, it's good to have someone you can depend on. The future of home entertainment is mine. Because I've got eye control from Time Warner and my choice of high-speed internet. I can download at the speed of whoosh on my computer or watch a movie on my TV whenever I want. I'll take that one. So, I tell my so-called friends who have dial-up or satellite, wake up. Call today and get Roadrunner High Speed Online for only $24.95 per month for your first three months, plus free activation. So, can your TV do all this? We'll show you how to cut your cable bill in half Tuesday after 24. Terry Glenn over on the bench for the Green Bay Packers. It was the interception right in front of him that happened that stopped Green Bay's drive down the field. And now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have it. First down and 15 and a quick throw to Juravicious. Juravicious has the only Tampa touchdown of the day. And Troy Aikman, I'll ask you, something like that happens as it happened with Brett Favre, with Terry Glenn. And that's really, frankly, something that Favre has dealt with the past few years with his receiving core. If you're Favre, do you lose respect and or confidence in a guy like Terry Glenn? Well, there's no question. Now, obviously, they've been playing together enough games that he's got some kind of confidence in him. But in a tight game like this, when a guy quits on a route and you throw a key interception at a critical time, you're going to be a little reluctant to go back to him if that same opportunity presents itself. Chris, I'll go to you on second down and eight. A toss to Pittman running left. Out of bounds, short of a first down by about a yard. I thought it was revealing when Warren Sapp talked to us a couple days ago and he said, look, I've been playing against Brett Favre twice a year for eight years now. He's going to try to force the ball into spots that he shouldn't try and force it. Not to say that that last one was, but when we get the opportunities, we have got to catch the ball when he presents us with a chance for an interception, and his teammates on the defense have done that tonight. Well, they have done that, and they've been doing it all season long. They lead the league in interceptions, but you go back to the two big plays in the ball game. I believe it was Terry Glenn that didn't run the crossing route and got that interception, and now this one quits on the play. I'll tell you what, it'd be a long time before I throw the football again. Third down and one for Tampa Bay. A little play action. All kinds of time and dropped by Dudley. Ricky Dudley has been plagued by the drops his entire career. He had put a lot of that behind him this season, but that was wide open. Well, first of all, he has plenty of time, which is not something that Brad Johnson normally has afforded, but he could have gone either way with this ball. He chooses Ricky Dudley. That's a good decision. Should have been completed. He also had Keyshawn Johnson on a deeper post. That could have been a shot for a home run. Instead, it's fourth down and a yard, and Super gets rid of it. His best punt of the day, and it comes at a good time for the Buccaneers. Darian Gordon crosses the 20, and they will mark him down just shy of the 22. 48-yard punt, and the Packers get it back down seven. Sam Adams Light, the first great tasting light beer. Shockingly great taste. Yeah! Men in Black 2 on DVD and video. Get ready for close encounters. Hell no. Of the wildest kind. 
on two discs packed with special features. Men in Black 2. Buy it Tuesday on DVD and video. Whoa. Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. Oh. With Microsoft Server Software, you can quickly connect all aspects of your business. That's software for the agile business. From Microsoft. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Microsoft. Providing software for the agile business. By Porsche. Discover what only Porsche brings to driving. By Sam Adams Light. Shockingly great taste. And by Energizer. Do you have the bunny inside? The chance to have the best record in the NFL is on the line here in Tampa, Florida. 14-7 Buccaneers and Green Bay has it and a big run by Amon Green. A penalty flag comes flying on that 15-yard run and it's coming back. And again, changes because of injury. Offense, still first down. Because of injury on that offensive line and it's the tight end Bubba Franks that's flagged for a hole. Well, we go back to that previous play of Tampa Bay. You've got Ricky Dudley right here going to the corner. you got Keyshawn Johnson that's going to run here. And what you're going to see is that he has a chance for Keyshawn Johnson over the top. The only guy who can get away with that is that defender there, the safety. He's not deep enough. Obviously not a bad decision by Brad Johnson, but Ricky Dudley has to make that catch. Ball all the way back at the 11. And I'm on green. Brought down at the line of scrimmage. It's the free safety Dexter Jackson that was first there for the Buccaneers. You know, just to follow up on your point about Ricky Dudley, here's a guy with phenomenal talent. What was he, the ninth pick overall in the draft and the Raiders, and everybody thought he was just going to be a superstar player. But when you continue to make misplays like that in clutch situations, that's the reason you bounce around from team to team. Second down and 19. A screen. Come on, Green. Jared Brooks. A terrific play. The weak side linebacker for the Buccaneers. And it's third and long coming up. Yeah, the one thing about it is the Buccaneers knew coming into this game that the Packers run the screen as well as anybody in football. And they've been very conscious of watching their keys, reading the offensive linemen, knowing when they're trying to slip out and get a running back in behind them. That time, Derrick Brooks does a great job. Monty Kiffin has done a great job preparing this defense for this game today. Carr dumps it off. But way short of a first down. Nine yards shy of a first down. Tony Fisher and Warren Sapp plays to the crowd as the Tampa defense does its job again. I think sometimes you pay too much attention to sacks, and sometimes you got to realize that just pressure is enough to throw a quarterback out of his rhythm. That time, Warren Sapp able to get to him and force Brett Favre to get rid of the ball. And the key thing was it didn't give Brett a chance to look down the field for the first down. That was third and about 11. flag on the play and Carl Williams slips down at the 36. 46 yard line drive punt. A return of four yards but a marker on the play. Well usually when it's about six on one I'm, I'm looking for help. I don't know about you Troy but <laughs> if it's one on one I'm usually yeah. looking for help. <laughs> Number 34 of the receiving team during the return. That's Jackson, the safety, playing on special teams. He pleads his case. 
And there's the face mask on Ferguson. Another holiday on the credit card, huh? Yeah, my balance is really piling up. <laughs> I'll worry about that in January. You could get a Capital One No Hassle card. <laughs> nah. I need you! My interest charge is running up your balance. Get the Capital One No Hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates, $0 fraud liability, and no telemarketing. What's in your wallet? You lose. I win. You lose again. I win. You lose. This is getting ugly. Oh, no, my, my batteries are dying. Presenting our longest lasting Energizer Max ever. Hey, how do you like me and Dad? How do you like them now? Energizer Max. Do you have the bunny inside? Do you want to go? Want to go? You want to go? Bring it, Chumpzilla. You couldn't tackle me in a phone booth. You couldn't see me with a telescope. You want a piece of this old man? Cry, little boy. Cry. Cry. You ain't ready for me. You're getting crazy. You think you can beat the butt? You feeling me? <laughs> I'm feeling you. Looks like the NFL has its game on, do you? Madden NFL 2003. If it's in the game! EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis and his mom serve Garrett Hill Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle. Loaded with more wholesome chicken than before. Filled up right by a great bowl, Garrett went on to bowl great. After the face mask penalty on Jackson, which moves the ball back to the 21-yard line, Warren Sapp went over and talked to his safety. Florida guy needs a jacket on a chilly evening like this. Upper 60s. Big Warren Sapp. And Tampa Bay has the ball and the lead with 10.51 remaining. Keyshawn Johnson gets to the 30, a yard shy of the first down. Big day in the Tampa St. Pete area. St. Pete Times Forum tonight. A lot of people will head from this stadium over to see Bruce. Bruce Springsteen performing over there. And I know it breaks your heart. It breaks, it breaks your heart, it, it, you it, can't go. It, it, it does break my heart. He was in Dallas. I didn't get a chance to see him then. We were working. Now he's going to be down in Austin March 2nd get a chance to see him there. He's about to get his own theater in Branson. We can head there. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and one. All stop. Falls forward right at the marker, and it depends on the spot. It looked like he got enough for a first down, but we'll see where they mark it. It is a first down for... Tampa Bay and Warren Sapp wakes up talking, probably talks in his sleep. Well, how about Friday when we saw him and met with him? I mean, he, he looked like he was ready to put the helmet on and start playing that day. And we've done a lot of games now for Tampa Bay. And I've never seen Warren Sapp two days before the game as excited as he was about playing. And it's obviously a big game, but he was really looking forward to it. On first down. Over the middle of the field, Johnson dropped it. They're going to call it incomplete. Incomplete pass. Incomplete. And I'm sure there are Green Bay Packer fans sitting at home right now screaming at their television set. But the rule in the NFL is not only do you have to catch it and get two feet down, but you also have to do another move related to the game of football. And here the contact seemed to take place almost simultaneously with the hit. There's the kick. Oh, it's a little bit close. He did make a move at the tail end of that one. But once the whistle blows, you can't challenge it anyway. Kyle Diggs came up with a recovery, but an incomplete pass. That's the call on the field, second down and 10. Out in the flat, Dilger. There wasn't much there on the play anyway, as Nate Wayne was ready to pounce. Third and ten coming up. Yeah, the only thing they lose there, you're right, with Nate Wayne there, he wasn't going to get any yards even after the catch, but the one thing that probably would have occurred is that the clock would have kept running. So the clock stops, and, and right now, if you're Tampa Bay, you want to try to get first downs, and the reason for that is you want to try to take some time off this clock. 
seven drops by the Buccaneer offense today. One of the drops by Keyshawn Johnson early ended up in the stomach of Nile Diggs for an interception. Straight man coverage. On a blitz, and the pass a little behind McCardell, and Mike McKenzie almost had a free walk into the end zone. Well, we almost had a tie ball game right there. You're right, Joe. And Mike McKenzie spotted that one. He comes up and jumps. You see him right here, McKenzie. And if that ball was any more behind him, McKenzie probably intercepts that and goes in for a touchdown. But as it is, three incomplete passes and fourth down. Gary and Gordon waiting deep for Green Bay. Another line drive punt. Chance for a return. Gordon. Good return by the veteran Gordon all the way out to the 40. So in a battle of field position, Zapp and the defense about ready to go back to work. Favre takes over at his own 40. Do it. Wait, an electric dog collar? I will never do that. No. It really doesn't hurt. We'll tell everyone you did it. Oh, great. Uh -huh. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. You sure it's off? I promise oh, you sure? it's off. Don't you worry. Hello, Moto. I used to worry about money. Then I got Brown. Brown helps me figure it all out. Brown manages my inventory, fills my orders, then ships them to retailers anywhere. And here's the cool part. It saves me money, so I have the cash to keep my business growing and my people stoked. They're stoked. Order fulfillment, distribution, one company. UPS, what can Brown do for you? When Bernie gets food poisoning, you won't believe his hallucinations. A special Thanksgiving Bernie Mac. Oh, Lord, they're killing me. All new at 8, 7 Central, Fox Wednesday. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by UPS. What can Brown do for you? The big picture to come into focus is who gets a leg up after this matchup between Green Bay and Tampa Bay, two eight and two teams coming in. Far guns it, another interception, third of the day, it's Jackson. Dexter Jackson with a chance. Dexter Jackson with Sapp in front of him, driven out of bounds and a late hit as Favre made the tackle. Sapp yesterday and he said that he thought one of the real keys to this defensive turnaround this year was the play of Dexter Jackson. Red Favre tries forcing it into Donald Driver. Dexter Green Jackson Bay right there after to the make the play. We'll put a lot and a great return all through in the process. Just a bad throw by Brett Favre trying to force one in to Donald Driver. Donald Driver has only got one reception on the day. Well, you know, and I don't know how they run their routes in Green Bay, and I don't want to overstate this, but sometimes the wide receivers have to go in there full gore, diving for football, sprinting over the middle, and they're just sort of gliding through their routes here. And obviously this is such a great matchup with Warren Sapp and Brett Favre. I don't think Warren Sapp wanted to hit Brett. But it, it's, they're not decisive in what they're doing on their routes either. There's a personal foul on the late hit by Flanagan. And this is all stuff. Good work up front. Artie Nickerson in the middle of it. 
Warren Sapp in on that last play on offense. On the give to Mike Allstadt, Jameel Cook. So they've got the big men in the lineup offensively as they will be faced with a second and goal. There's an injury. Jameel Cook is down. And you take a look at Warren Sapp in the tight end position. And I tell you what, he comes off the ball a lot harder as a defensive tackle than he did. He talks trash whether he's on <laughs> offense or defense, so you got to like that. But if you look at this goal line package here with Mike Allstock, he is the only one on this team who has a rushing touchdown, and they've given him the ball each time they've gotten down here in this position. And if they're going to continue to try to run the ball in, you can bet that Mike Allstock's going to be the one getting the ball. Looking at the ankle of Jameel Cook, we'll take a break. Wow, MP3 player, digital camera, DVD player, very nice. Looks like some of these kids are going to be very happy this holiday. <laughs> kids! <laughs> I'll be right uh, Something for everyone. Circuit City has tons of great gift ideas this holiday season. Circuit City, we're with you. Hey, my wife loves these things. Uh, All wives love things. <laughs> Could you... Uh, the Braun Synchro is the world's first shaver with a four-way moving head, so it catches more hair in fewer strokes for a closer shave. Only it moves so fast, you can't see it, but you can hear it. And to keep it feeling like new every day, its automatic self-cleaning system thoroughly cleans the shaver in alcohol, leaving nothing to come between the shaver and your face. Braun, designed to make a difference. They shared as children. Something has come back to collect us. Was only supposed to be a dream. Wes Craven presents They. Ready PG-13. In theaters everywhere. Wednesday. To get the hot girl, Malcolm's got to play dumb. Allison, a moron. So he's going to turn to the master for help. His brother. I can actually feel my brain click off. On a new hour of Malcolm. <laughs> You didn't by any chance find that coffee can in the garage, did you? At 9, 8 central tonight on Fox. Tis the season for giving. A diamond engagement ring. Why do I have to wear the stupid helmet? Because you're stupid. And Eric's giving Donna the gift of a lifetime. Don't miss an unforgettable That 70s Show. A new hour at 8 Fox Tuesday. Chris, you're still shaking your head as you watch Brett Favre and Donald Driver talk about, I'm sure, that last interception. Yeah, I think that last one was on Brett, though. The more I watch that play, it looks like that one was on Brett. The first two, I didn't think were. Second down and goal. Pittman loses yardage. Yeah, what, happen one. what happens is, is because of the injury to Jamil Cook, they then cannot leave Mike Allstott at the tailback position. Therefore, he goes to the fullback spot on that play. They put Michael Pittman at tailback. And Mike Allstott is not a natural fullback in terms of blocking, but there were a lot of other Packer defenders there to make the play. Looked like Kerry Jenkins stumbled coming out as he tried to pull in front of that play and really broke it up. Allstott comes out, and Pittman and Stecker are in the backfield. I think this will be play action right here. Now it's only Stecker in the backfield. Tampa Bay one for nine on third down. Wide open, Dilger. Touchdown. tell us the other day for the first time in my career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if we can win this game and win next week we can honestly say that the Super Bowl runs through Tampa Bay it sounds a little funny but it may be coming to fruition the Buccaneers have scored 15 points off Green Bay turnovers the heart and soul of that defense loves what he sees here today Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we've got no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let 
it snow, let it snow, let it snow. thought it was interesting when talking to Brett Favre about that Minnesota game. He kind of just shrugged his shoulders and kind of laughed it off like, we just know that we, when we go up there, we don't play well, and I'm not surprised at all that we lost. And it's almost like his body language and the facial expressions here in Raymond James Stadium where he and the Packers are 0-4, maybe 0-5 after tonight, is about the same thing. Like, at the end of the year, we just wipe it away. His reactions have been odd after some pretty frustrating moments for Green Bay. Yeah, and I agree with that, Joe. And you watch him today, and he just doesn't seem like he's been as intense and as enthusiastic about the game as what we've grown accustomed to seeing him when he's playing. Javon Walker would love to give the Packers a good return. Decent up to the 27. Tonight, Marge accidentally gets cosmetic surgery on a new Simpsons. Then Hank discovers his son's a happy homemaker <laughs> on a new King of the Hill. And Malcolm's stupid in love on a new hour. It all starts tonight at 8 Eastern. Now, how do you, what, what is this accidental? I, I don't know. Probably, yeah. Tune in and find out. Huh? I think it worked out pretty well for Marge, though. <laughs> That's all the promo. <laughs> First down for Green Bay <laughs> from their own 27. in trouble, sacked. Simeon Rice, ten and a half on the year. You're going to see Simeon Rice, 97, and Mike Flanagan, who went out to tackle from center, is working against him, and then Brett Farr feels the pressure, and Simeon Rice goes right over the top of Mike Flanagan to make that sack. Second down and 16. A sprint to the right to buy far time. He has a ton of it. When he has time, and with that arm, he finds Donald Driver for his second catch of the day. Two yards shy of a first down up at the 35. Let's go to L.A. for a game break with James Brown. Joe Buck, the Giants looking to move within a half a game of the NFC East leading, NFC East leading Philadelphia squad. Take a look at Imani Toomer. Great second effort here on this pass from Kerry Collins. That makes it 14-13, Giants. We are now in the fourth. Back to Joe Buck. Third and two. A flip to Amon Green right up the heart of the field. And a first down inside Tampa territory. Well, you're going to take a look at how it happens. And there, Amon Green's going to come through here. You're going to see that lane open up. You got Mike Wall who's pulling up inside. There's the shovel pass, and there was just nobody in there. They're stunting up front. Offensive line for the Packers does a great job creating the crease. 21-yard gain on third and two. Five over the middle. That's his tight end, Franks. Down to the 39. Three more interceptions from Favre after throwing three last week. The first one by Kelly, his fifth of the year. Rondé Barber gets his second. And then it's Dexter Jackson, his second of the season. And it's 15 points off turnovers for Tampa Bay today. And you just have to put that in perspective. There's the graphic. Six interceptions in the last two games, only four in the eight leading up to that. And off is to Fisher. Weaving his way for two yards. Third down coming up for the Packers. And the Packers have to get on their horse here a little bit. They're going back to the huddle, and the clock just keeps ticking down. At some point, you have to get back into that no-huddle offense. Yeah, there's no question. They're two scores down here, being down 14 points. They've got to score a touchdown here, and they've got to do it in the shortest amount of time possible. I would expect if a first down here, they'll go immediately into the no-huddle. Fake handoff. Uh, flips incomplete. And now it'll be fourth down. The Packers will have to go for it. Remember, Green Bay had to spend a timeout earlier in this half on the two-point conversion try, which was good anyway. 
by the Buccaneers. Brett Favre makes a big mistake right there. It's third down and two. He had the corner. He had the first down easily, and instead he tried to flip all the way around and make a tough throw back to Bubba Franks. It's really a misconception, though, these days to consider Favre a guy who runs a lot. He buys a lot of time behind the line of scrimmage. That's right. We saw him run earlier, but he didn't run on that one, and he doesn't run often. It's a big play here. Barb throws, and it's caught by Javon Walker for a first down at the 30, and the Green Bay Hopes are still alive. Well, and that's just a great job by Brett Barb on the previous play, as Chris mentioned, just a first horrible down, decision, Bay. horrible throw. But here, he's able to buy some time and find Javon Walker for a key first down. They are just letting so much time click off this clock, though. Barb guns it way behind and over the head of Javon Walker. Barb is asking for a hold on Walker. Well, Javon Walker, yeah, he's got his arms up in the air, and... Brett Favre is just not throwing the ball with much accuracy today. He has missed people, and I don't know if it's from indecision on exactly where he's going with the football. Tampa Bay defensively can certainly create that, but he had Javon Walker right there. There was nobody around him. The corner had turned him loose. He just failed to get him the ball. Blitz. And it's tipped. Simeon Rice. And I think this is the right strategy now for the Buccaneers. You have to remember this entire offensive line has been shaken up. And so many times, yeah, you might be able to beat them one-on-one, -on -one, but now you're getting into situations with blitz pickups in positions you're not used to playing can be very difficult. A timeout called for by the Buccaneers to catch their breath. Third 10 when we return. GX is an adventure in luxury. It's a 14-point game, and Brett Favre and the Packers are faced with third and ten. throws and has his man wide open. That's Donald Driver. And a first down just shy of the 15-yard line, a gain of 15. It's amazing how wide Simeon Rice lines up. Looks like a sprinter getting ready for the 100-yard dash all the way on the outside. He has to be a good three yards outside of the tackle. Mike Flanagan all the way out here on the side. Well, he's already had a sack and he knocked the ball down two plays earlier. Reception, the fourth of the game. Second for Kelly. And Favre has had a miserable day in Tampa. Yeah, that play right there. Brett Favre may have had a shot, but he just tries throwing another fastball, which is what got him in trouble a little bit earlier. Brian Kelly that one you're going to take a look at it and he has a chance but he's got to lay it up into the corner of the end zone and he throws a line drive and brian kelly's underneath it not to mention he had dexter jackson create some help that's what allowed brian kelly to be underneath it really more than anything it was just a bad decision by brett Favre. shouldn't have thrown the ball in the way that he threw it was also bad well, I tell you what, Brian Kelly just keeps coming up with big plays for the Buccaneers. Used to be everybody just went over and picked on him. Now I'm not sure which of those two corners is the best player. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Michael Pittman, you know, all week long, Red Favre has been fielding questions about his retirement. He made an offhand comment that he keeps getting asked about now, even Terry Bradshaw. Flew to Green Bay. He made that long flight. By the way, the four interceptions ties the regular season high for Favre. 
and he even asked him about it. And Barr said, I'm going to get driven into retirement if I keep having to answer these questions. But he still doesn't want to say flat out, this isn't my last year. He wants to end up on top, and the future will tell where we are with that. But Barr just doesn't appear like he's got it at all in any way, shape, or form today. You know what, though? There's a whole bunch of quarterbacks against this defense that have looked just like this. It, it, I mean, we just have to remember this defense is by far the best in the NFL, allowing under 12 points per game, number one against pass coverage, top of the league in interceptions, great pass rush, a lot of ways to beat you. Pittman gets down to the nine, a gain of five. I think to go back to what you said, Joe, and Brett Favre, his, his talks about retirement and always being asked about that. And I think the best thing Brett Favre can do is just come out and say, look, I'm not talking about retirement. I'm planning on coming back and playing. And once you float that out there, once you float the retirement word out there, you're going to be asked about it week in and week out, which is exactly what's happened with him. And I think at some level, the rest of your teammates, they don't want all the uncertainty. They don't. They want to know what the future is with this guy. And it's just not something that needs to be the focus point at this part of this season. Green Bay had to use its final timeout. You see now up in the top right-hand corner of your screen, the Houston Giants score. A lot of time left, and time permitting, we'll get this audience to the end of that game. And Houston with a two-point lead over the New York Giants. You look at the last six games against the Bucks, 13 interceptions and a two and three record at the start of the day. It's on its way to two and four. And Joe, one thing that we can't emphasize enough is what this game means for the big picture, not just between these two football teams, but around the National Football League because there are a lot of people celebrating the fact one step further away from having to go through Green Bay to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to go through Los Angeles for a game break with J.B. J.B.? And Joe visually embellished how Houston took the lead. As you mentioned, Chris Brown banging home this 50-yard field goal to give Houston a 16-14 lead, looking for their third victory of the season. And as you said, Joe, time permitting, we'll take you to that contest. Back to Joe Buck. All right, J.B., you look at the best records around the NFC. And Tampa Bay will end up on top of Green Bay with a win here. Who are you highlighting there? Atlanta now jumping ahead of New Orleans. The second place in the South. Timeout here in Tampa. Fourth down, Buccaneers. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Hello? Hi. Hi. Let's play The Stranger. Okay. When someone gets home tonight, someone should be wearing a naughty French maid outfit, a blonde wig, and holding a six pack of Bud Light. Me likey The Stranger. Oh, you meant. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Wow. Oh, whoa, stranger. Make it a Bud Light. The circle back to uh, Cincinnati with those figures, you know. Where's the dead? Oh, no. It's off? Okay, I'll be right there. Guys, I gotta go. I think we can achieve some stuff. No? What? That's awful. Really sorry, but I have to go. The new Boxster. It is, perhaps, the perfect getaway car. What is it? It's a UBA. A UBA? Universal Business Adapter. What's it do? It connects anything to everything. What's this for? Your laptop, your mainframe, call center, Unix servers, Linux servers, internet, supply chain, payroll system, HR, email. Slick. Is it affordable? Fast? Easy? Very. Does it work in Europe? You need an adapter. Well, the Packers figure to get it back here. Two minutes left, 21-7. Tampa Bay on top, and a punt coming from Tom Tupa. Buccaneers want no special teams mistakes. Just get it and get rid of it. An awful punt. Darian Gordon. We'll let it roll to the 41. Thanks, 
Thanksgiving Day, you know the pregame guys, JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy, they get you ready for a holiday tradition. Is it a holiday tradition for Jimmy Johnson to sit down with Jerry Jones? Well, that's coming your way on Thanksgiving during the pregame show. Then it's a Fox NFL special as the Redskins take on the Cowboys. Coverage begins Thanksgiving Day at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, only on Fox. We're going to unveil an award. Everybody's got to have some sort of award, I guess. It's written somewhere in some broadcast manual. We'll have that on Thanksgiving. And I want to ask Troy Aikman about what the mood was like in Dallas with Jimmy Johnson's return this week. I'm on green on a dump off pass. Brought down just shy of the 45. What was it like with Jimmy Johnson going back to the Cowboys facility? Well, I'll tell you what, it's the first time he has visited the facility since uh, since his parting back in 93. And there was a lot of electricity in the building. And from what I understand, it was no hold barred in that interview. I think a lot of interesting things came out of it. There's the arm and nearly the fifth pick of the day and it would have been the third for Kelly if Terry Glenn doesn't get up and bat it down. It was like Glenn was playing defense on Kelly. You know as great as Brett Favre is he does have days from time to time like this one. You just don't expect them to come back to back the way they did against Minnesota and now here you think back to the playoff game last year against the Rams when he threw five six interceptions something like that in those ball games. So he has plenty of huge days but from time to time, they'll have one like this, too. Third down and six. A minute 19 remaining. There's the fastball, and Terry Glenn makes the catch at first down, but he can't get out of bounds, and the Packers don't have any timeouts left. You know, we had talked about it at the beginning of the game, and the last nine games that they've lost, the game following that, Brett Favre is 9-0, and and talking with Mike Sherman last night about that game, Chris, we were talking about the championship game, and he said, Brett's at a stage in his career where he's just able to kind of let things roll off his back and come back the next week and compete. So obviously he's going to be frustrated with this ball game because of what's at stake. But there's no question if you know Brett Favre, he's going to bounce back and play at a high level again next week. I don't blame Mike Sherman for being hot with the way the Packers have approached the last few minutes of this game. Lazy getting back to the line, not getting set, drawing another flag. As they had guys moving all over the place, they just had no sense of urgency. Ball start, number 58, offense. The penalty occurred inside the last minute. By rule, we'll have a 10-second runoff. Please set the game clock to 45 seconds and start it on my signal. Not to say that it's realistic that they're going to come back here, but just the, the attitude and the mood isn't very good. I think it's frustrating for any coach when you're playing in a big game and you get less than your best effort from your football team, and Green Bay has not given their best effort. Barb guns it out of the hands of Donald Driver and nearly into the midst of John Lynch. Today's game being produced by Richie Zients, directed by Artie Kempner, the technical producer, Dave Hill. Technical director is Rich Basile. The audio mixer is Fred Aldis. The associate directors are Greg Scopatoni and Derek Manning. Broadcast associates are Jake Ullman, Jeremy Green. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Bourne and David Hill. Steve Horn, our editorial consultant in the booth. Dave Schwabe and Steve Kleinfeld assisting us up here. 34 seconds remaining, second down and 15. And Glenn, what a catch. Terry Glenn down inside the 20. But the Packers can't stop the clock. 29-yard throw and catch. You know, I just can't help but feel that the Packers sort of played the Buccaneers game today. Ooh, a little Dan Marino play. A little fake spike, and the Buccaneers were at least ready for it. Donald Driver is overthrown. Is it possible, Troy, that you can talk yourself into the wrong kind of game and talking with Brett Favre last night he was so concerned about the pass rush constantly talking about how quickly he was going to have to get rid of the football it was almost like he was in too big a hurry to play the game today yeah, I don't think there's any question and as a quarterback when you've had bad things happen in the stadium it was much the same way for me when I went and played at Philadelphia for Brett Favre when he comes here and plays at Raymond James Stadium he has bad feelings every time he walks out on the field and it's hard to overcome those Teams in the NFC may have to come here and play at Raymond James Stadium in the playoffs after this win over Green Bay. The Buccaneers have to keep it up, but they get a big one today. Argu
arguably their biggest regular season victory as they go to nine and two. Well, we saw the Baltimore Ravens a few years ago ride a defense all the way to the Super Bowl. We might be seeing the same thing out of Tampa Bay here. Well, and I think you take a look at John Gruden, and he's the guy who said he was looking forward to seeing what this series was all about. This was his first encounter. I bet it lived up to everything he thought it would be. 15 points scored off turnovers by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 15 of their 21. And it's that defense again that comes up and shut down the Green Bay offense. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. He's soaking wet, and he's getting me all soaking wet. But Warren Sapp, if this was a statement game for the Tampa Bay Bucks, what statement was made? You might just have to come through Sampa if you want to go to the Super Bowl. And that was our whole goal, was to come down here and get us a win today and put ourselves with the best record in the NFC and win a good position for a championship run. We've seen some fierce battles between you and Brett Favre over the years, but today was all Warren Sapp as a Tampa Bay defense. You know what, Sam and the boys did a great job. They, they sent everything at me in the kitchen sink, but just kept fighting in the D, and all the boys around me played well. And He knew he threw us, threw us a couple balls, and we picked him today and got us some points on the board and won the game. So how big are you guys thinking at this point? I mean... You feel like you're the you're the king of the hill in the NFC at this nah, point? Nah, we just simply get 24 hours to enjoy this win, and next week we got to go to New Orleans for a team that pretty much handled us the first week of the season, and we got to go get it done. I'll send you the dry cleaning bill. Thank you. Back to you, Joe. <laughs> just so you know, Brett Favre had one more tackle officially than Warren Sapp today, but Sapp drew all the attention, and the defense for the Buccaneers did their thing. 21-7. That's the final here in Tampa.